I mean, I think that I think that I think that when you go to Taco Bell, uh huh. I think you should have a limit as to how much did you can get at Taco Bell. Yeah. They're going to cut uh, you off at Taco Bell? I, I think they need to start cutting me off when they're yeah. like, sir, you cannot have five burritos. You're 43 <laughs> years old. That's too many burritos. I'll tell you what, I've had enough chalupas. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes, that's right. We're starting with Taco Bell. Welcome back, everybody, to the Rage Like Podcast. Your Rage Like Time, Jeff. I'm Amanda. Amanda, the second podcast of 2022. Hell yeah. The two, 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 it was funny. We have almost as much news this week, like in the last seven days, yeah. as I had in the three weeks that we were off over oh, Christmas. Yeah. So uh, the game industry just can't help itself. <sighs> but before that, I don't know. I was having a really hard time with this because I feel like um, over the last several months, it's like every week there's been a thing. Here's another thing. Yeah. Here's a thing to watch. Here's a thing to, to do. Yeah. Um, last week, there really wasn't very much. New, there wasn't a brand new shiny thing that everybody was talking about. Yeah. So I thought that maybe I'd say that like I'm watching the book of Boba Fett and that's pretty okay. Yeah. Like, everyone seems kind of like middling on it. Yeah. It's all, it's all, it's all right. I haven't even it's, seen Mandalorian it's, it's, season two. It's all right. I've it's opted right. to not uh, dedicate my time to any television series. Sure. Just any energy I have goes towards movies. Yeah. None of them new. No new <laughs> movies. I've just been watching old movies. I saw you, you watched uh, Man Bites Dog. <laughs> I had to, so my friend lent it to me uh-huh. and I had to be like, hey man, if there's a rape scene in a movie, uh, go ahead and just throw a bitch a warning. Yeah. Like, hey, he was like, I told you it gets dark. And I'm like, right. <laughs> He's a serial killer. And he just like murders people. You have to tell me if there's a graphic rape scene. Uh, and, yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. like, I know for next time. No yeah. other movie that I lent you. He lent me five movies. No other movie that I lent you has a rape scene. And in the very next movie, within the first 10 minutes, there was a, a rape scene. Oh, my goodness. I was like, I'm going to murder you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny because I remember watching that movie like when it came out a long time ago, mm-hmm. and then I was like, "That was interesting." I don't ever want to watch that again. Like that's yeah. not not something I'm I'm into at it's, this point. It's like, definitely one of those like I'm glad I watched it. It's an interesting way to tell like a story. It's very like dynamic and it, it fucks with you because like he starts off seeming to be kind of a charming guy and yep. a nice guy and you see his family and everyone loves him, but you also know he kills people. And you can kind of let go of the violence because you're. Because it's a movie and you kind of, you know, violence is a thing in movies and whatever. But then it, 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 it does a really interesting thing where it just kind of slowly makes you realize the horrors of what he's doing. Yeah. And then and then makes it worse and then makes it worse. Yeah. And, and, and so it's interesting, but it's not something I'll ever like. <laughs> it's certainly not like a comfort movie to watch. I'm going to put something. this on to fall asleep to at night. Yeah. <laughs> Could you imagine? Man oh, my God. Stock, I'd be like, OK, uh, we I mean, don't talk to me. Yeah. Please. <laughs> Red flag. I, I have to call somebody. Or everybody. I'm not sure which yet. Yeah. Um, so it was, you know, I'm glad I watched it, but I, you know, never want to see it again. And then um, he lent me Dead Man, the mm-hmm. Johnny Depp movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah old, old. That's an interesting. I, 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 all I remember about that movie is like f- there's five minutes of Crispin Glover being fucking nuts. And then that's it. He's and not in it, it anymore. Yeah, he's, he's like, like in the, the very first beginning he's 10 like, minutes of the movie. Yeah. Going crazy. And get this. <laughs> the, 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 so he lent it to me and then so I like, gave it back and I was like, oh yeah, I really enjoyed it. It's, you, you see, he seems to really be into like um, character films, films with just like actors that are just allowed to just kind of do their shit on yeah. screen. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, it just seems to be your MO. And he's like, did you notice Crispin Glover in it? And I'm like, <laughs> how could you not? <laughs> fuck are you talking to my dude like yeah i noticed and then i start talking about michael wincott who's in it and he was just like i don't know who that is and i'm like don't uh, you to, like throw crispin glover at me when he's like front and center right character but michael wincott who's the main villain in the crow which yeah. is how i know him but he's also in a million other things is fantastic as one of the like bounty hunters sent after johnny depp it's funny because i didn't know the name but like as soon as you said that i know the voice yes the moment you right. hear his voice that's it's what like, i'm saying he was in alien resurrection he flew the spaceship in alien resurrection he's phenomenal Fuck it, i smoked a billion cigarettes then, guy yeah, like, like like yeah why so was he never it, batman he should him batman. and um <laughs> lance henriksen are in so many scenes together mm-hmm. that they're and they both have these really great voices yeah that it's just like oh i could just watch those two just talk to each other they could just do whatever they want and just talk and talk and talk dead man is uh jim jarmusch right 
Uh, uh, is it Jim Trout? No. Year? Is that like, hold, we uh, we got a we got a global information source. Hold on, we can we can find out. Um, in 1995. Because I remember uh, Jim Jarmusch. Yes. Okay. So music by Neil Young, which was very funny because a lot of it is just like a single guitar riff of just like and it's like good job, Neil. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's funny. Jim Jarmusch was on, there was this weird show. I don't know if you know this, but like my friend made me watch it. It was this fucking weird show called Fishing with John. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was like, I don't even know who the hell let them do this. Uh, but like, okay, who was it? It was, uh, it was a television series and it's 1991. Uh, it was like released on Criterion Collection. It's John Lurie, actor and musician, John Lurie. Um, who uh, I, I don't even know, but um, he it's like four episodes and he just goes like fishing. And one is Jim Jarmusch, the first one's Jim Jarmusch, mm -hmm. the second one's Tom Waits, Matt Dillon, Willem Dafoe, and Dennis Hopper in a two parter for the finale. <laughs> and work. it's not about fishing at all, like yeah. it's this weird. It's kind of comedic, but also very serious. I remember the Jim Jarmusch one the most because it's like he gets in the car with John Lurie and he's like, so are you going to drive? And he's like, I don't know. Do you want to drive? And he's like, well, I don't know. Are you a better driver than I am? And he's like, they go back and forth with this, like, who's going to drive thing? And then John Lurie is like, do you want to drive? And he's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> and they just start. Oh, Jesus. But like, this is a weird one. This is one of those ones that I don't know that anybody actually knows outside of us 90s people yeah. who had the friend that was like, you got to watch yeah. this weird <laughs> You got <laughs> I love those little like I no one uh, twelve people in the entire world know about it. Yeah, I don't know why it got made in the first place. Uh, it's also got like the weirdest. It's got, just got this weird dreamy theme song. Then the only words of it are just like fishing with John. <laughs> what the? <laughs> like, <laughs> where did this come out on? Like what? It, uh, it's nineteen. It was nineteen ninety one. Let's see. Um, it was okay in the DVD commentary. Let's see. It's a television series conceived, directed, and starring. Uh, but like, what did it? I don't know. Do oh, know uh, it was originally aired on IFC and Bravo oh, in 1991. Yeah, that sounds uh, like 90s IFC for sure. Yeah, IFC used to be so weird. Like, like that's where uh, Greg the Bunny got its start, and it was yeah. just a puppet show m mocking fucking indie films. <laughs> and then I think what uh, was Jim Jarmusch also uh, Ghost Dog? No. I'm wrong about that, aren't I? I think you're wrong about that. I think I'm wrong about that. No, there it is. Was Ghost it? Dog. Okay. Yep, I was right. 1999. And then you did Broken Flowers, which I, I never watched anything. I watched Ghost Dog. I watched Dead Man. Uh -huh. That was it. I never seen Strangers in Paradise, even mm -hmm. though it's like critically acclaimed. Yeah. Uh, Only Lovers Left Alive. I've never seen that. Wow, God, look, he's been the dead. Dead don't the dead. Oh, I did watch the Dead Don't Die. Oh, that that's the one him. With the, oh, that was really weird and very unsatisfying. Yeah, where it was I like, didn't watch it, but I wanted to, and then people were like, "Well, it's maybe not." And I, don't I think if you go in with like low expectations and the idea that you're going to be watching a. Uh, surreal fourth wall breaking indie movie mm -hmm. and not like a zombie movie. Yeah. Like if you're Which, in the headspace so, for that, it's kind of like if you went in to watch Dead Man and you were like, I can't wait for this rootin' tootin' cowboy adventure. Yeah, I, and you're like, what the fuck is this oh, shit? And the funny <laughs> thing is the reason I didn't watch it because I thought, well, the cast is phenomenal, yeah. but I don't want to watch a zombie movie. Right. And so I, prob I probably would have been more satisfied because it's not, that apparently like I, I could tell you like to give you an idea of this movie it's like adam driver and bill murray drive around as cops yeah and the theme song to the movie is on the radio all the time <laughs> and at one point adam driver or, or bill murray or one of them they have a conversation about like what is this song and the other one is like it's the it's the soundtrack to the movie. Yeah. And they're like, what movie? And she's like, the movie. Yeah, the one. <laughs> uh, yeah. So it's a really weird movie. Oh. I just think I went in expecting one thing and then it was like, oh, I'm a little let down because it's, it's like, you're not going to get to the end and be like, oh, what a great three act structure with a setup and then some complications and a, a, a satisfying payoff at yeah. the end. So. But if you're into some crazy shit, yeah, I'm pretty good. My whole thing about I want to watch 365 movies yeah. uh, in this in 2022, mm -hmm. 
And uh, uh, so my whole thing right now is just like really having fun with the way people tell stories. Yeah. And so it doesn't have to be this like pretty beginning, middle and end. This this Marvel style. I feel like Marvel's kind of burned us out on that. Like, yeah. There's right. So many now things. I just I really just want the I bring back the weird man. Yeah. I uh yeah with the my movie buddy we've been having these conversations where I'm like it's not about a perfect film with a nice little bow on top. It's about the fingerprints of the filmmakers. Uh, like really giving you a taste and flavor for everything. Well, I mean, it's, I think that, so for me, I, I remember thinking this a while back of like, um, there was a point in my life where I was like, I'm tired of this, like, let's deconstruct everything and fucking have an artsy film about blah, 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 blah. I just want to see some action. I just want to turn my brain off. I want to watch Fast and the Furious. And then it was like five solid years of nothing but Transformers, Marvel, Fast and the Furious, John Wick, and I'm like, you know what? I'm okay with some weird introspective horse shit. Yeah. Like I, I would like something that you need. <laughs> look, you need a David Lynch every once in a while. Yeah, like you need it. It just makes everything better. Mm-hmm. It doesn't. It doesn't mean that you have to like exclusively have the one. You know, everything becomes Oscar bait and uh, serious and dark. Or and they, you know, it becomes this weird like cyclical thing of just like constant too much introspection. Yep. And then you're just like, this is too dark just punch somebody will you yeah right <laughs> like just maybe everything doesn't need to be sepia you know yep. add some color and pizzazz but yep. now it, yeah it's just like uh, you know have fun with it both ways yep uh well speaking of having fun hell yeah for a long period of time uh let's let's talk about video games let's talk about video games so do we have to i'm afraid so <laughs> i'm afraid we do no we, we had the fun part at the beginning and now, <laughs> now it's time for the work it's, it's cornbread for days that's <laughs> just shove it in cornbread uh, <laughs> uh so last week we got a, a a thing this is maybe not the biggest story in the world but it very much spoke to jeff from rage select oh yeah so dying light 2 dying light the game was this uh, this zombie parkour game. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like a lot of people mistake it with Dead Island, uh, which was the you know the the moody trailer with the yeah, person really, falling out of the building or whatever. Yeah, it like goes yeah. backwards and then yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Uh, Dying Light was like parkour zombies Mm -hmm. uh when the sun goes down like the zombies get way more powerful and like more aggressive Mm -hmm. and then during the day it's like you can cut it so you want to get to like safe houses and you play as this guy that's been dropped into this quarantined zombie city trying to find like an antidote or no they have like it's one of those ones where it's like if you get bit you have to get a thing but you have to do it every 12 hours isn't that like is Uh, the one like in the mall dead rising dead rising sort of like that okay but the but the the parkour really set it apart because it was like mirror's edge but then you could also jump kick a zombie and and like when you leveled up you would get like oh now i've got a grappling hook or like now i can wall run twice as far and so instead of being like incremental upgrades to strength or whatever you were getting like these powers that really opened up this big world yeah so you can ninja out a zombie yeah so dying light 2 is coming out uh very soon i believe it's either january or february but uh they've been they've finally gone on their they it's been in development hell for a long time they finally gone on their their pr um offensive and they put out a tweet last week and they said to fully complete dying light to stay human you'll need at least 500 hours almost as long as it would take to walk from warsaw to madrid um which they they then had 500 hours and then 534 hours to walk from warsaw to madrid um so i feel like i would rather walk from warsaw to madrid you would at least be able to tell people I've walked from Warsaw to Madrid instead of I 100 percent to Dying Light yeah. too. So <laughs> one's more impressive. Uh, th- then uh, I was trying to find the release date. Anyway, so then um, the internet, of course, was like, "I'm sorry, excuse me. Yeah. Like this is a single player action game. Like no single player action game should take 500, 500 hours. hours. That's nuts. That's ridiculous. Huh. Like that. That's." That's like longer than all of the longest JRPGs we've had over the last few years, like back to back. Like those games are 80 to 100 hours. And you're talking about five of the longest JRPGs for your, your open world parkour zombie game. Yeah. So, you know, they like uh, they 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 were like, OK, oh, February 4th. God damn it. That's so bugging me. So then they come out. They're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. 
and they said uh, they posted another update. They said we wanted to clarify our recent communication about the amount of hours required to complete the game. Dying Light Two Stay Human, or uh, to complete the game. Dying Light Two Stay Human is designed for players with different gameplay styles and preferences to explore the world as they see fit. And then they posted this this graphic that was like. Uh, Okay, 20 hours, time needed to complete the main story. 80 hours, time needed to finish the main story and all the side quests. 500 hours, time needed to max out the game with all main and side quest choices and endings, checking every place in the map, every dialogue, and finding every collectible. Now, I've been thinking about this for a few days, and I think that, like... Um, one of the biggest selling points of Dying Light 2 is that there are different factions, and mm -hmm. you have places in the game where you can choose, I want to go with faction A over faction B, and it changes the way the world is set up. Yeah. So I believe that this 500 hours is like if you went back and replayed and the game. And then chose different, different like, paths every time. Yeah. Yes. So like, okay, woo, 500 hours, no. However, everybody's ignoring the first number here. The 20 hours? 20 hours to complete the main story. Mm -hmm. 20 hours if you don't do anything but play the main, main story. story. Uh -huh. That's too fucking much, man. Do you still feel like 20 hours is too much? Well, the thing is that I normally expect in a single player game 20 20 ish hours to be the main quest and, and the side, side story. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So the that idea that if you're going to do side quests in this game, it quadruples in size. Yeah. It goes from 20 to 80 hours. 80 hours is a long time, man. It like is. that's going to be the only game you're going to be playing like for the entire year. And while I appreciate that people that's a lot of bang for $70, right? Yeah. Um you and I were talking on we're playing Psychonauts, and we're talking about how like like people have a finite amount of time. Yeah. And we've gotten to a point now where like the number of movies and games and TV shows and, and animes yeah, so and astronomical and you can't keep up with everything. And the thing is that it used to be, it was like, well, okay, uh, I can do everything. And then we got to like, well, I can do everything. And then I'm just going to skip everything. That's like a B and below. So yeah. I'll do all the A and S tier content and everything that's B or below. Like I'm not going to, do or if it's just not interesting to me, like, yeah, right. um, I'm not going to watch supernatural. I don't care. Like, yeah. uh, I'm going to play video games instead. But now it's like I with with shit like this, it's like I have a choice. This comes out February fourth. Elden Ring comes out at the end of the month, right? So mm -hmm. like Elden Ring is gonna be a big ass RPG as well. Yeah. There's a bunch of stuff in the middle of the month that's coming out. It's like the only way to beat this is going to be to like give up other things that I want to do yeah. with my life. And I find it profoundly dissatisfying to play a, to start playing a game knowing that you have no intention of ever getting to the end of it. Yeah. Um, knowing that you don't have 80 hours to dedicate to play the game properly yeah like, let alone 500 hours to my god fully explore the game properly my god yeah so i don't know like this is the it's weird how it's like i don't know it's like um if you if you went to a, a restaurant and they were like ten dollars for a steak and you're like great and they're like okay ten dollars and we're gonna give you a hundred steaks yeah and you could do nothing but eat steak from now until may yeah and you're like that's too much i that's want a, a lot of steak i yeah. want like salmon and like you know yeah, like, cracker jacks uh, and yeah. other stuff <laughs> in my diet taco bell like. yeah you're like can i have a salad today and they're like no, no steak just steak yeah only steak um I don't know. You don't play a lot of games, so I'm assuming that this. Or you, you don't play a lot of long it. games. Yeah, I wouldn't touch it. I'm I'm a real uh, casual. I like just short and sweet yep. kind of games. If it's long, it has to be something that I can drop out of and then come back to, um, and not like think about too much. Yeah. But I don't think, especially with like a parkour style, you gotta you get that right fucking feel for what you're doing to get away from the zombies mm -hmm. and do the this and do the that. I don't think that's one that you can like jump away from and then jump back into. Yeah. Probably. And so like it for me it'd be like, oh yeah, I played for like five hours and then I didn't play for two months and then I came back and, and then it takes me And like, I was like, what the fuck is going on Yeah, this game? and then it takes me like yeah. another seven hours to remember how to fucking play it mm -hmm. just so that I can get a little further. Yeah. yeah. Um, it really... It, it also really puts into perspective this, this idea that like... Um, 
here's the thing is is I don't know because I think you'd have to do some market research, right? But like game companies keep saying like, well, we've got to raise the price of games to seventy dollars because of all the time that it takes to make video games. And yeah. it's like nobody's asking for 500 hour yeah. video or I'm not at, I don't think that the majority of people are asking for 500 hour video games like yeah I wonder I don't know their demographic but I wonder if their demographic is even the type to want a game that di- like they have to dedicate such a, a mm-hmm. huge chunk to like I, I just wonder if there there's this thing of like trying to keep your players for as long as possible right uh, when maybe that's not necessary, like you could do less and still satisfy without being like without being cheap or without like mm-hmm. um, you know giving them a half game and then being like oh well if you want more kind of thing like you know give them a complete game but that doesn't mean that you have to like overstuff it. Well, and then the other thing is that like what I would normally expect because the previous Dying Light had an expansion where you went from the city to the countryside mm-hmm. and the countryside expansion was like twice as long as the city and it had some various expansions. So it's like if the base game had been 10 hours, 20 hours, 100 hours, yeah. right? Like that would be fine because I could play a 20 hour game. Yeah. And then in six months, if you're like, oh, here's another t- 10 hours, 10 to 20 hours of game. We added in this new faction story that you can go, you know, take your save game and go pick it up from here and whatever. Yeah. Like the thing is that it makes me think about the Marvel release schedule from last year mm-hmm. where I'm tired of Marvel because it was just, f- it was five TV shows and four movies. Yeah, like, and it was like, as soon as one is done, the next thing starts. As soon as that one's done, the yeah. next thing starts with maybe a week off between. Like, I played hundreds of hours of Dark Souls, but not in a row. Yes. Like- <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like they forget that you have to be able to kind of palate cleanse between everything. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't, yeah, I just don't want to the other thing is I'm really sick. I'm really sick. I just wanted one more oh, yeah. thing that pet peeves me. I'm really sick of this idea that gets put up all the time where people are like, well, if you just do the main quest and skip all of the side content, it's only 20 hours long. And it's yeah. like, guys, that's not how gamers are wired. Yeah. To just be like, somebody's over there like, hey, help me. And, and you're, you're like, like, nope. Fuck off. Nope. I only have 20 hours <laughs> yeah. and I'm getting through this main story quest. I'm on a timer, like, bitch. Uh, I I also kind of wonder what the quality of the side quests are when it's that overstuffed. You right. know what I mean? Where it's just like the same thing over and over again. The the I need you to walk me from point A to point B. I will walk just a little slower than your walk cycle (laughs) yeah and just the like i'm gonna please please uh i just you know is it worth does that actually derail the quality of it a little because then it's just over stuff well yeah it's 80 hours but it just went from 20 hours of solid gameplay to 80 hours of Mm -hmm. meddling middling gameplay at best you know what i mean and like maybe it is 80 hours of fantastic gameplay but like if you can make 80 hours of fantastic p- gameplay, you should have probably made two games. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, no, I, just I mean, feel like that's a lot of game. The other thing is that, and then the, the last thing that I was thinking about last week is it's also like we've gotten into a space where we're talking about conditions for developers, mm-hmm. uh, crunching and like being forced to work long hours and, you know, kind of like bad conditions inside of studios. And it's like, if you've done all of this, like I bet I would be willing to bet that next year, if this game had metrics built into it, like, Five percent or less of people that played the game would have played the five hundred hours. Yeah, and it's like, well, so did you need that? Did you need to have people that were spending all day long programming bullshit into the yeah. outer reaches of your world so that like you could put that number yeah. on Twitter? Like, is that even worth it? Yeah, I don't think so. But yeah. also, it concerns me that one of the things they listed for the five hundred hours was collectibles. Yeah, and it's like. I swear to God, if they're collectibles that do nothing and you're collecting, I want all the golden eggs that do nothing. Well, but it's it's such a catch-22, right? Like, if they do something, right, then you're going to be severe. You're not even going to be seeing all of the content in 20 hours because you're going to be underpowered because you didn't get whatever the rewards were for the 500 hours. But on the other hand, you'll never see the 500 hours because ain't nobody got fucking time to play the same video game for 500 hours. Yeah. 
Like, I don't even think children have the attention span to play. Uh, like, it, you, they have the time, yeah. but not the will. Yeah. And it's like, fuck, dude. And it's just a, like, it looks like a very good zombie punch and parkour fun game. But again, you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Why? So, um, yeah, that happened. That was that was kind of a disappointment. Um, and I I. I don't know. Speaking of disappointments, uh, Battlefield 2042 is in the news. Yeah. Uh, So Battlefield 2042 is, uh, we've got two stories from them. The first one is that apparently Battlefield 2042 is hemorrhaging players online. Really? Which is bad for, um, it's bad for an online multiplayer game, right? Yeah. You're going to play with people. Just me and one other person. So I'm going to tell you something, and I'm going to tell you something else, and I expect a dramatic reaction. That's what a conversation is, Jeff. From both of these things. Yes, okay. So according to the online stats on Steam, Battlefield Five mm-hmm. has more active players than Battlefield 2042. That happened in December. Yeah. As of January... Battlefield 1 now also has more players than Battlefield 2042. What's going on with Battlefield 2042 that everyone's just like, fuck that? Uh, it is broken as fuck. Is it? Oh, oh yeah. Like, there there was... um. Uh, like people found that when you like you get in a helicopter and there are buildings in the game that don't have collisions, so you could just fly inside of them to hide from people. And like uh, the anti tank guns do less damage than like a sniper rifle that shoots the same tank. That's right. Like, we, I ta- we talked about this. Yeah, there's yeah. Like the, you the, showed me the, the like reticle would be yeah. directly on somebody and they would shoot and it wouldn't hit them. Mm-hmm. And like I remember this conversation. Yes. I was there for that. So they've been rolling out fixes, but you know, a little too little too late well it takes time yeah. right like what happened was this was obviously rushed to market and it needed a lot of polish time but some hack at the company was like no we got to get it out by christmas get it out there i don't care how broken it is and how's that working out for him <laughs> well you know sometimes it works like I, I was saying last week cyberpunk 2077 um they sold that game pre-sold that game and then had a thing where you could get unlimited refunds like anybody could get a refund if they were dissatisfied yeah and it, it, it was like 10 percent of people yeah so it made a lot. shitload of money regardless but yeah like the problem here is that this like the way that you bring players back to battlefield is with new content but you can't start making new, new content, content until, until you, you fix, fix what's already content. there yeah um jason murphy is quite salty. Is he? <laughs> oh, yes. oh, yeah. Does he play it with his like brother or something? He was looking forward to it a lot. Oh. Uh, but yeah, so that happened. Um, from there, though, we have another story, and this is a weird one because all of the all of the headlines on this are like Battlefield 2042 Reddit may get shut down due to toxic toxicity. And it's Are like, they all being dicks in there well, on the internet? Okay, so here's Battleville the thing. Battlefield fans, <laughs> I can't believe it. Listen to that shock. Here's the thing. Around um, around Christmas, uh, let's see. The EA Global Director of Integrated Communications, Andy McNamara, um, expressed like frustration with the community of mm-hmm. Battlefield 2042 with this tweet where he said back to work today check Reddit and Twitter and Battlefield fans are pissed we didn't do enough uh, updates or communication during the holiday break guys people got a rest we have things in motion but we have to figure out what is possible we will address it when uh, when we're at 100 percent and then the uh, Battlefield 2042 subreddit yeah. uh, s- fucking went bananas. Yeah. And were being really fucking mean. And they were being, they were making memes and they were being shitty and they were just like, we yeah. fucking fixed the game. And then they, they, they talked about how they're like, you know, banning the shit out of people. They're like, don't abuse the developers. And they're like, if it gets too bad, they might have to quote unquote pause the subreddit. We're basically just like, turn it off yeah. until it can get back to normal. Now, you know, we've got a we've got another story that's coming up that's like a crappy story. But in this one, it's like, you know, this is a common internet story, right? Like somebody says something seems reasonable. Fans go nuts. Fans go nuts but like they charged seventy dollars for a broken game. Yeah. And like, I'm sorry that like it shouldn't all fall on this one guy. Right. But on the other hand, 
this guy's got to know that that's a tone deaf thing to say. I was going to say, like, it's it's kind of condescending to be like, sure, we sent out a broken game, but right. you guys need to fucking chill. <laughs> like, uh, it, no, it, they're allowed to be upset about it. Yeah. Like, there's a way of saying it where it's like, look, we hear you. We know you're upset. We're trying to get to 100% so that we can come back and fix everything that you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Uh, but instead to be like, guys, Christmas. Right. And don't uh, try to fucking emotionally manipulate me. We all wanted to enjoy our Christmas. And I got a game that was broken. So my Christmas break was spent not playing your game. Right. Uh, me and my buddies were going to play Battlefield yeah. 2042 over the Christmas break. And yeah. unfortunately, it was a fucked up flaming pile of dog shit. And yeah. So- like, it, you know, so maybe... Uh, both ways need to chill like sure you know at some point you need to not like bludgeon somebody on the internet with your memes and being mean and being you know (laughs) shitty but simultaneously when people don't respond correctly and they don't they're real tone deaf and are very like but from my perspective you guys should have been a lot nicer (laughs) the jedis are the evil ones (laughs) my fucking favorite line in any star wars movie ever yeah um yeah, and, and another and, and, and another, another thing, thing yeah. uh, <laughs> is uh, the thing is that I think uh, like this is a little bit of an uh, an internet victim blaming mentality that I'm about to say right now, mm-hmm. but I got to get all the way to the end of it. Like, but I blame the victim. <laughs> uh, but like, you know, I think that you, I think that we are far enough along that you should be able to look at that tweet before you hit send and go like, is this a good idea? I think I should leave this in in the drafts. Uh, yeah. Like I don't think I should put this out there because do, do people not do the thing where they write out a tweet or write out a comment and then delete, and then it? delete it? I like, don't think they do. do. I, why do I feel like I'm one of the only people where I'll be like, you know what? Fuck that person. This is why you're a complete <laughs> asshole. Blah 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 blah. And then I write it out and go. Uh, all right it doesn't need to be said and then i erase it yeah. and then i feel better and but I, everyone here is just like you know what send I that'll think, make me a hero <laughs> i think that anybody that has any amount of experience in any form of a communication field mm-hmm. writes a thing and then goes to read it yes. to make sure that it is what they wanted to say yeah. and then when you get done reading it then you're like Okay, I'm over it now. I as opposed to being like writing it, writing it, writing it. Sad. I don't like. know if you're like me because I do. I go even further. So I'll do the. <laughs> you I'll, just I'll hover write over it. the sin. No, I'll write it. I'll read it. I'll read it out loud, and then I'll read it out loud to John. Oh. A, a lot. A lot of my online interactions, when it gets to that sort of thing, yep. it starts with. Am I do I sound crazy right now? And then I will like read what I said to John Mm -hmm. and then he will be like, no, no, that makes sense. Or like, well, it sounds like you're mad. And then I'll like rewrite it to like take out the anger so that it's all just like facts or whatever. Right. But like, I don't know if that's just a me thing, but I always am trying real hard to get like my your tone you want to say what you want to say right yeah well and i don't know if that's like a inherently like female thing because you know if you're like overtly emotional that everyone is very like (sighs) well you know maybe if you like calm down and weren't on your period and it's like i'm i just (laughs) this is not about you know what i mean but like yeah so it's just like i it's, it's just crazy to me how many people will just be like and i didn't think and i typed and then i hit send and i feel really good about it i'm not backing down one fucking bit and it's like yep what i backed down before i even hit send and y'all are like just out here doing it huh? Plus, i just can't reiterate this enough people it's a sixty dollar video game. Yeah. Well, it's not free to play. Like it's a, it's a it's a video game. And we just got done talking about how there are other video games you could have spent your sixty dollars on that were long and full of interesting content, and they had a lot to offer. There's other online multiplayer games. Yeah. Like I can't help but notice that Call of Duty Vanguard, for all the problems that it has, does not appear to be a broken multiplayer game. Yeah. Like, I cannot help but notice that Halo Infinite might have problems with their battle pass, but, like, the sights on the guns work. Yeah. And it's like, you guys didn't hit the minimum level of competency for yeah. what you were asking yeah. Step for. Step one, <laughs> make a game. Right. Couldn't be done. Yeah. Don't start getting condescending in your tweets. Yeah, exactly. Afterwards. Which, I mean, and then I understand the other side of it, too, but at this point, it's like, you need to, you probably just need to log off of Twitter. I, I, mean, yeah. I, I mean, most people need to just log off of Twitter 
Yeah. Just in general, but at least like once a week, just like fucking no don't litter. open the bird out. Yeah. Like get it out. Get out of here. Um, all right. So we're going from one toxic community story to another toxic community oh. story. So Tabletop Simulator. Do you know Tabletop Simulator? I do not. Tabletop Simulator is a Steam game that is basically like a multiplayer thing. Started out really basic, but it's just a big table, and they kept adding games. So mm-hmm. you could have like chess or checkers, but then they added like more name brand games. You can go online. So like Monopoly. Yeah. Sorry. But, but more like Trouble. esoteric stuff, too. I think they have like Catan uh, or and oh, stuff like nice. that. Yeah. Uh, I don't really know a lot about board games, but I know that a lot of people use it because mm-hmm. you can get people in a party. They kind of sit around this virtual table. There's a button to flip the table, which is oh, nice. nice. Um, so, yeah. Now, there's a global chat. This is a really complicated story that mm-hmm. I feel like is very difficult. There is a global chat room where people can go before they go into a game to basically, like, talk to other people. So, if you don't have, like, specific friends in mind, you could go in there and be like, anybody want to play checkers? You know, it's fucking Friday night and I'm drunk. I want to play checkers. Um, so, there was a uh, there was a, um, there was a person on the internet uh, let me just see if I can find a Z- Zoe Allred on Twitter, and they or she, I don't know, yeah. uh, noticed that like they got a temporary ban after typing "gay" into the chat room, mm-hmm. and they were basically like saying, I'm "I am gay. gay," yeah, like, and they were looking for like other LGBTQ plus people to play with, and so they typed, "I'm gay," and pfft, like done yeah and so then they went in and typed uh they were trans as well they typed trans and like like yeah oh kicked out yeah so this is a big this is a big one they put together a whole google doc that i read through a lot and they went in and they talked about it so what happened was when it started they went and talked to the mods and like i think i know what happened here so Mm -hmm. the, the mods were just talking about like um this is one of those this is one of those weird cases where the mods were like, okay, the mods were shitty about it. Mm-hmm. They were like, uh, sexuality. This is a, like a family friendly channel. We ban for stuff that is not the, you know, sexuality. That's not a thing. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So of course the next thing that they did was they went and typed like, hi, I, I'm a cis straight guy. Anybody love being cis out here? And everybody was like, woo, straight life. Like, yeah. I love it. And then nobody got banned. Right. Right. And, um, so after reading through a lot of this stuff, I feel like this is a this is a weird situation because I think that what happened was that gay is on the list of banned terms to keep people from being like that's gay you're gay yeah uh, get your gay ass out of here yeah. you know like, like using, using it as, it as a, a slur, slur. Yeah. right when you've got a word that could be both a slur in some context but also like an important identifying yeah. thing in another context um, that doesn't I think hold up as much for trans because I don't know anybody that uses trans yeah. as like a slur. Uh, what if I want to talk about the Trans Siberian Orchestra? I, you can't. I can't. Get a band. You can't do you get it. a band. Yeah. <laughs> uh, That's all I ever want to talk about when I'm playing tabletop games. Yep. So they went into the Discord for this to mm-hmm. talk to the mods a little bit more directly. And there was a really kind of fucked up interaction. Or not fucked up, but it was a real bad interaction with one of the mods. One of the mods. They, what was the, I need to get the quote. They talked about how, okay, like it's not a place to discuss sexuality, fetishes, or politics, right? So the, this is one of those things where like, I think that, that the gay and trans thing fits under sexuality, but they were like, are you calling trans like fetish Fetish, a thing? But then they also went in and said like, Woo, Joe Biden. I, I love Joe. Who loves Joe Biden yeah. in here? Like, I can't wait for the Build Back Better bill. And people were like, boo, fuck Joe <laughs> Biden. And it was like, nobody got banned. And one of the moderators said, like, this is something that we normally have to manually moderate because politics is so broad that you can't, like, <laughs> auto block for saying house, yeah. you know? Like, so. It gets oh. in this situation where they were using an auto blocker. Right. And then the mods who probably were a little overworked because as of the pandemic, this thing had like 5,000 concurrent users in 2019. Yeah. And in 2020, it was like 36,000 concurrent yeah. users yeah. because everybody was using it. Of oh. course. Yeah. So I assume that the mods are also just like overworked, overworked and to... crappy. Yeah. Um, probably just wanted this to go away. Yeah. Like underprepared for what was going to happen with it. I mean, it's also got to set off like if you're a mod, it's got to like. You got to get like a real 
adrenaline jolt when you read that and you're just like, oh shit, this is a this is an internet shit storm yeah. occurring in my <laughs> on my screen right now. Yeah. Um Well, yeah. It, the problem is just that the like it, it, there's an issue with the the I hate when people talk about sexuality and it becomes a like, well, we don't want to bring politics into it. Right. But it's not politics. This is these are people like this is their identifiers and who they are. This is not them being like, I am Democrat. I am Republican. I am whatever. It's this is who I am. It's not a political choice to be gay. And in that at, like implying that with that kind of verbiage with the it's not a place to talk about fetishes or politics it's like right no you're implying that that being gay or being trans is a political choice or or a fetish yeah uh or like a kink and that's none of those things both yep. are none of those things like gay and trans it's just uh weird like and it's the only thing that people do that with yeah. So then it's like, so you're, but you're fucking lying. <laughs> yeah. You guys just like picked the easiest thing to block out and then uh, acted like you were doing some savior thing, you know. So, uh, you know, we have to manually do everything else, but it's much easier to kick out the gays. <laughs> right. Like, this, that, none of that sounds good to me. I just, like, personally, I might be coming from a bisexual woman, but like, it's just. I mean, it's it's an incredibly the thing is that moderation on the internet used to be a lot easier, yeah. but like everything is very fuzzy to a point now where it's like it's harder. It's harder to it's harder to create an automated set of rules that's going to be able to take into account all situations. Right. Um, so the response was first um, the the Berserk, which is the company that makes Tabletop Simulator, uh, put out a kind of a they put out a, a, a not a great statement. Uh, but then they actually put out a full statement and they turned off the global chat for Tabletop Simulator. Huh. Like just they're disabled like, no it one entirely. Can talk. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think that they're, they've are they said that they're going to like work on it and see what happens. Um, but I, I, I kind of have a little bit of sympathy. Like I, you know, I just. You no, know, I get I, it. Like when you need to moderate stuff and you want to keep it family friendly, but you can do so by banning curse words, banning words like body part words, right? Yeah. Like if you ban pussy, I'm that's fine. Yeah. But when you're banning things like gay, if you took out every single like sexualized word. Yeah. Of which I'm going to name all now. No. <laughs> oh, God, no. uh, Demonetization. <laughs> but like you know, damn it, Amanda, <laughs> yellow check mark. Yeah, you're like I learned a lot of new words today. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if you banned all of those, but you leave things like sexuality, like trans yep. and gay and stuff, then it would clean that up. And like, what would a person even say? I mean, if you use gay as a slur, that's its own. That's a totally different mm-hmm. issue. But yeah, so it's just I don't know. I oh, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. There's a um, it's a complicated story that ends with a crappy uh, uh, addendum. Yeah, which is that once this happened, um, the review bombing started at Steam. Uh, review so, bombs, yeah. Uh, if I can find, I don't know if I can find it here, but like basically, you can see. Uh, yeah, you could see like the recent reviews. Jesus, so here's yeah. the Steam more reviews, and then it's like of the recent. There's like a huge down and a huge up. Yeah. So and a lot of the down is just like these devs are homophobic and they're they're you know pieces of shit. And then the up ones are like I hate trans people. They suck. Good job sticking it to them, which is like, <sighs> oh god, yeah, <laughs> my what dudes. A, what a shitty way to get like trapped in the middle of this conversation. I hate yep. review bombing one way or the other. Yep. Because it's just unfair. Like if they took the like the chat down to try to work on it, and I I, I give them the benefit of the doubt and say that they're genuinely trying to work on it. It yeah. sucks that now they're trapped in this bullshit of like the people that are supporting them are garbage, and the people that are bombing them didn't give them a chance to even rectify the issue. Right. So it's just like you're damned if you do, you're damned if you and don't. Now it's like we just wanted to. Play checkers. Yeah, like, like we just made this thing that was small. This is and, a boyfriend dungeon. Yeah. This is fucking like go play online with your friends. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the solution is. Like, uh, I think it's a really tricky thing. And I think that it also is one of those things that's really difficult because like if this this is obviously a smaller company. And the thing is that, um, you know, like if your product blows up during the pandemic, everybody's inside and you have a sudden influx of, of money. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, do we spend all of that money to like 
uh, hire more moderators to make sure that the community stays good or do we like put that money into like developing whatever the next thing that we want to do or enhancing the current product yeah like, there's a resource allocation thing here there's also a whole bunch of other um software that's like this that yeah. you can play games online with so yeah. <sighs> all right you ready for that we have a whole the, this whole section is uh, oh god uh yeah we got a lot of uh, left to go um are you ready for the next one I, yes you ready? yes all right speaking of I'm speaking of, speaking <laughs> of software that's blowing up everything let's talk about wordle, wordle. have you played wordle amanda hell no i have not why not uh because it <laughs> annoys me the idea of it annoys me uh-huh how so? The like single play, like one word a day thing. The, yeah. Everyone posting pictures of boxes. Yeah. Um, Sorry. You made it worse. I made it worse. I made it worse. <laughs> uh, but I don't know. Something about it I'm just very like not into. Okay. It, it just doesn't appeal. I mean, you know, this is... This is this is 2022, Jeff. I don't give a fuck if you play it or don't play it or yeah. hate it or love it or whatever. Like, yeah. I kind of dig it because it's just like... 10 minutes a day yeah kind of a fun little thing yeah um like i'm not very good at it like every so often i've gotten lucky if but my like... facebook is any indicator nobody's really good at <laughs> <laughs> so okay wordle if you don't know is a little it's a little app where you get this five letter word and you type in letters and then it'll tell you whether you got a letter but it's in the wrong place you got it it's the right place or that letter's not in the word you get five try six tries to do it mm -hmm. uh and there's one a day i think there's one every 12 hours i think there's two okay. a day actually yeah. but like for most people unless it's one a day it's one yeah. a day uh uh, and then when you get done, you guys have seen the little squares. There's a channel in the Discord. Everybody knows. It's like you've seen them on yeah. the little squares that are darked out. So you can kind of see the progress. It but was very funny for John and I because we were like seeing everyone on Facebook post up. And we were just like, what the fuck is this Wordle yeah. thing? And then all of a sudden I was like checking the Discord, looking at everyone. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck is this channel? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I watched Bryce play it for a long time. And the thing is that like. Bryce is a good bellwether for me because he's like on the edge. He's like, he's, he's trying out all the new stuff. Yeah. And I was like, well, if Bryce likes it, I'll give it a try. Yeah. Um, you gotta give it a shot. The other thing is it's the same word for everybody. So there's kind of a competitive aspect to it. There's the consequences of like, if you can't get it, you're just done. Do you get a hint for the word or anything? Nope. So that's a, that's okay. the interesting thing about it is that it's five letters. So what happens is when you start, it's like, I feel like a lot of people have a word that they'll try at the beginning, and then you see which so letters the are there. Word so, like, the same here, I actually, my my one today, today's word. This is coming out later. Was um, uh, Abby, and it really fucked me up uh, because I started with press that had an e, mm -hmm. and then I put in beach, and that had b e a, and then I put in table. Why would you? Can I ask a question? Yeah. Why would you do a word with two letters? Because they have two letters. Some of the solutions have two letters. Right, but if your first go, shouldn't it be different? I'm not trying to optimize. Right. Uh, yes, you are correct. <laughs> uh, you are correct. Uh, but like, and then I got to the end, and I had A, B, and E in these positions. Yeah. And I was trying to be like, yeah, without doubling the B for Abby, I was trying to figure out words that were like. A something, B, B E, e yeah, something. Yeah. What the fuck is this? I don't know. So anyway, anyway, some, uh, one of the things, uh, Wordle is a, a thing this guy made for, I think his boyfriend or something. Yeah. Is this guy named, his last name is Wardle. It's named after him. Yeah, he made it cute. as just a fun thing and yeah. then put it up. He doesn't want it to be a big thing. Some uh, dude, Zach Shacked on um, Twitter decided like, well, I'm going to make an iPhone version that is more, it's also got six and seven letter words in it. You can play as many times a day you want, but you have to pay money and it's monetized. And because he didn't copyright it, I'm going to call it Wordle wow. and put it on the app store. And then like, okay, all that, whatever. That's going to happen, right? Yeah. You're going to have uh, G-Pub and Schmattle Royale and yeah, whatever. Yeah. Like, but then he went to Twitter to crow about how good it was doing. Like went to Twitter to post screenshots saying, here's one. This is absurd. 450 trials at 1 a.m. last night and now at 950 getting a new one uh, once every minute. 12K downloads, rank 28 word game, and number four result for Wordle in the app store. We're going to the fucking moon. Um, so, yeah, a lot of people, first they let the guy that made the game know. Yeah. Uh, 
Also, Apple has a whole series of tools for what to do when people rip off your game on the App Store. Yeah. Um, a lot of indie developers went online to call this guy kind of a piece of shit. Uh, to yeah, be like, of course. Yeah. Uh, so he eventually got it taken down and, um, and then went on. Well, also, it turns out that if you go far, back, far enough back, because this guy makes like app games and stuff, you go far enough back in his timeline, you can find him complaining about somebody ripping off his game on the uh, on iPhone store. Yeah. Uh, but he put up a kind of an I'm sorry tweet that was, here were my calculations. Wordle is a ripoff of another game. Wordle, the word is a trademark, and there's a bunch of other unrelated word apps named the same thing. Wow, I'll hack something together on the weekend and see if I can make a buck. I think that the thing about this is that it's just so nakedly cash grabby oriented yeah like the original wordle was obviously made as just like a little thi- it's like the guy that made flappy bird and yeah. he was like i just made this for fun and like yeah and they all jumped on it i can't control that you guys want this weird shit yeah that's on you that's not on me right you can't judge me i made it you played it <laughs> so he like he he this it, it's just that this it's just so scummy like it's just, yeah it's gross yeah uh, and i'm glad i got taken down and i hope this guy just doesn't don't do that. Yeah, don't, don't do that. Don't act like it's a shocking thing that when you rip somebody off that you got caught. And, or the, you know, especially a, after bragging about it. There's like, a thing that people are all into and you're just like, oh, I'm going to take that and then make people pay money for it. Why and does everything like, have to be a fucking cash uh, grab for people? Uh, I'm like, why not just... Go make NFTs, Zach. Yeah, That's Zach. What you just draw weird <laughs> monkey art or whatever. Oh, the apes. Oh, the apes. The apes. I thought they were the worst and then I watched this YouTube video called Why Are NFTs So ugly that explained why they're so ugly and they actually showed a bunch of other ones that are way worse the apes look great in comparison to a lot of the Don't bullshit understand. that NFT makes um, anywho uh, so yeah Wordle there it is. Schmertle. Play it, everybody. I don't know. It takes like 10 minutes. I like, don't hate right. those kinds of games. I just, everyone did it all at once and I got bombarded right away. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Where everyone's just all of a sudden fucking, you got to play the game. You got to do it. You got to yep. do it. And I was just like, oh, I'm never going to fucking touch this game. I will get into Wordle uh, six months from now when nobody's playing Wordle. Yep. <laughs> That's just how I roll. I think somebody said that like what? The last one was, uh, uh, there was a game called Blaze Ball that was kind of like this. It was like a fake league like a, a fantasy yeah, league yeah yeah and then before that i think it was like threes that everybody I was remember posting threes, threes yes. you know? so lord could be worse it's yeah there's could nothing be. wrong with everyone just connecting over some little silly game it's yeah. just when people turn it into cash grabs and are shitty about it or whatever play what you want to fucking play play whatever you want just enjoy you know, enjoy your time well, look at this. this is an article on kotaku and there's this 12 ways you are making your house look cheap and tacky. I don't want to click on that. I probably have all 12. Yeah, uh, I was like, me being inside of it? <laughs> Aw. Sorry. Um, so, okay, switching over, uh, Phil Spencer, the head of the Xbox, uh, was on the New York Times podcast on Monday uh, talking about stuff. And it's interesting because he brought up a um, he brought up kind of an interesting thing where he was like, Xbox Live is not a free speech platform, and we do not want it to be. Huh. Um, like, what does he say? Uh, let's see. Oh, this is like later on. He said, uh, it's, it's, it's one built on interactive entertainment where controversy and confrontation-driven user engagement would be a death strategy for the business. He said, we're not there to allow any conversation to happen on our platform. It's very difficult to come to Xbox Live and say, okay, I want to create a political party on the platform. It's really set up for community around interactive entertainment and the games that run our platform. Um which is interesting. Mm-hmm. I feel like when everybody, I feel like this is one of the first times I've ever seen a company with like a public facing, like you can post what you want or you have like a timeline or whatever platform that's just like, uh, yeah, you are not allowed to say whatever you want to. Yeah. We will decide what you are allowed to say. And if you say what we don't like, we will fucking. I mean, boot is, you. is that like, not what like businesses are like should be like you have your own fucking i guess you come in and you uh, buy your i I don't know it's like the bo burnham thing making fun of like bugles take on uh politics and shit like that it's just like just let you know uh like sometimes it should just be about what the fucking business is about and not yeah the everything i came in here so that i can discuss my political views (sighs) views <sighs> yeah um yeah they also 
<laughs> said <laughs> yeah. uh, that Spencer said, uh, when someone gets banned in one of our networks, is there a way for us to ban them across other networks or at least as a player for me to be able to bring my banned user list because it can always block people from my play, which is, I think, a really interesting concept it of is. instead of having to curate like a specific group, you could just be like blanket ban. Be gone. Yeah. Steam, Epic, Nintendo, <sighs> Xbox, PlayStation. I don't want to hear from you ever again. Yeah. I would be great if there was a tool to let you do that. And then also added in Facebook, Twitter, discus comments, like just I want you that, gone. Yeah. Like I want all of your attached accounts gone. And, yeah. From and my life. I mean this uh, in all sincerity. I've dealt with people that ended up getting a little too close to mm-hmm. comfort for me. And I had to ban them or block them on social media. And it's a bit of a struggle to find them on every single thing so yep. that I can, you know, uh, Facebook banned uh, Instagram banned and like blocked and like go through everything yep. make sure they're not friended on this make sure that they're that having something where I could blanket block people would be just go to like <sighs> like superband.com yeah. and type in the username find them and be like all of them it would just be, check all boxes it would just be <laughs> so comforting it was yep. a very because it's such a crazy thing to like even it, it is almost like a weird uh, violating thing to know that they can see what you're playing on Steam. Or mm-hmm. you, you know what I mean? Where it's just like, I just want to be able to fucking enjoy myself without feeling like some stalker is looking over my shoulder. Well, breathing you're down doing, your neck while you're, you're doing this. Yeah. You're, you're over here. I noticed that you this. And it's just like, no, no, no. <laughs> like, I don't want to have to private everything I do because one or two people have made made it uncomfortable for me. Mm-hmm. It's also it also sucks. I this is just my me general. I pulled back a lot from the internet. I don't I don't like I look I look at Imgur Im, Imgur like yeah. that's that's my Hell app. Yeah. like yeah. cats and like pictures of snow and shit like mm-hmm. um but uh, uh I forgot. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> You're like, I started talking about pictures of cats and then I got happy yeah, and then my, I tried uh, to get back in this conversation and I got sad. <laughs> uh, yeah. My, my, my whole thing. I would, no, oh, oh, I remember what it was. Uh, I don't, I don't like that our default is public. Yes. I think that you're, if you create a profile on anything and it has any kind of social function to it, your profile should start completely private. private. You can't even find my username. Yeah. Like until I open it up public. But of course it's like, I, I had I had an idea a few weeks back about this other thing that I was thinking about. There was like, what if you could make it on Twitter so that you could be like, I want to limit the number of people who can use my who can reference me on Twitter to like four a day. Yeah. Like when the fourth person has said like at rage select, then the fifth person goes to do it and they're like, Nope, can't do it. Yeah. But it's like, but Twitter would never do that because yeah. Twitter's whole business model is about letting people fucking avalanche, you know, up your ass because you said pineapple was fine on a pizza or yeah. whatever. Oh my like. God. Yeah. I am. Um, um, yeah. I actually genuinely like the way Nintendo does it mm-hmm. uh, because it is, it feels annoying. Everyone that does the like, oh, do you want to be friends on Nintendo? And you, Oh, I got to get my friend code and then right. pass it to you. And then you got to give me your friend code. Like we jump through who's still have to an- do that. Answer the questions three and shit like that. Um, it's not that complicated, but it is more complicated than just what's your ID. Right. And then you jump or, through or whatever. You know, for, for my, well, I, I did this shit on purpose, but like you just type in rage select on every platform and you find me. Yeah. Because people use the same thing across multiple platforms. Yeah. So. But yeah, but I feel like Nintendo is a little, it's just like a, one extra step, but yeah. that one extra step compared to how easy everything else is just makes it a little bit harder. I actually kind of like that. Well, plus the, I agree. I like this a lot because the last thing that I want is I don't want a news feed on my Xbox to see what people on my friends list are saying. Yeah. Because then at that point, I have to start muting, banning, kicking people. Like yeah. right now, I don't have to worry about it. I just turned off all notifications and I don't fucking respond to yeah. anything. And everybody has figured it out over the last five years where they're just like, instead of saying, hi, Jeff. And it's just like, you're never getting anything yeah, back from that, man. No, nope, not um, happening. The last thing that came out of this interview that was kind of interesting was they talked about, uh, I think it was Kara Swisher asked him about the uh, Activision Blizzard stuff. Mm-hmm. Where they talked about um, reevaluating kind of their stance with Activision Blizzard. Uh, and Spencer said, we don't want to do business with you unless you clean up. Uh, but then said, it's obviously not our position to judge who the CEOs are. Basically, it was kind of a hedge of saying like, 
um, you know, like if this gets really bad, we don't want to have anything to do with you. But on the other hand, I mean, I think it's pretty clear, like, you know, fucking Call of Duty makes a shitload of money for yeah. Xbox. So it would have to be something really, 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 really bad for someone like Xbox to cut ties. Yeah. So, um, which, you know, just kind of makes some of that, oh, you're so bad, shaking my hand at you stuff a little bit less potent. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you what, though. Speaking of Activision Blizzard, uh, Lego has actually delayed the release. In February, they were going to be putting out an Overwatch 2 um, Omnic set. Huh. And they basically said, like, they are delaying it, or tight, tighten, tighten set. They're going to be delaying it as they evaluate whether they want to continue to have business with Activision Blizzard. Interesting. Uh, I think this is, this is really interesting because I'm sure that Lego deals i mean if i know anything about lego right that they deal in like wide scale lay of a lot of different properties they do it's yes. not like overwatch is their bread and butter and if they turn off overwatch lego's gonna i mean go honestly they don't need a lot of licensed stuff to get they like there's a full lego audience you yeah. know what i mean yeah so yeah i mean that's really kind of the whole needs thing overwatch when there's lego sesame street out right now or Lego Sonic. We had Lego Sonic last week. Hell yeah. Which was weird. Uh, Gotta go fast, but I'm a brick. <laughs> I want that big I want that big question block they made for Super Mario World that opens up into like N64 oh, yeah. levels. It's like, cool. Yeah. Uh, oh, man. I started getting into Lego stuff, but I'm doing um, all their flowers. Oh, okay. Their plants and stuff. Uh -huh. I, I fucking love it. I told John <laughs> we, we're going to move into a house someday, and I'm instead of having a garden, I'm going to have like Lego plants. Every, Greenhouse full of yeah, plants. Yeah, so because I can't, uh, every time I try to have a, a plant, I like kill it, I and I'm tired of murdering plants. So instead, I thought like instead of having plants around the house, we'll just have Lego plants around the house. Okay. That makes sense. Um, yeah. So... Uh, that happened. Also, we have so many stories, Amanda. Boom, bop, boom, bop. Yeah, I'm watching I'm, you open op up every... Uh, opening the stories. That's not even to the trailers yet. Uh, we have to start going a lot faster. Okay. Um, GameStop uh, stock went up 20% as they announced that they are creating a marketplace for non-fungible tokens. Uh, well, yep. GameStop's always been the villain, so <laughs> it's not surprising that they went to NFTs. Yeah, I'm not entirely. Uh, it's just like, well, of course you did. Yeah. <laughs> because, like, you don't make enough money buying and selling video Speaking games. Speaking of cash grabs. <laughs> right. Like, we, we've learned that you can't just have a video game store. That's not enough. Yeah. Like, you have to sell Funko Pops or, like, refrigerators or something yeah. to make up for it. So, yeah. Uh, apparently, they're going to be creating a cryptocurrency partnership uh, to create games and sell items on a marketplace that they run uh, because of fucking course. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, I hate to just say that again, but that's kind of the long and short of it. Like, eh. yeah, like, eh. of all the scum fucks that get involved with NFTs, it was just like a matter of time yeah. until GameStop threw their hat in the ring. Of course. Um, but, you know. Their stock did go up 20% That's because crazy. of it. This company is never going to fucking die. I swear to God. Uh, yeah, I think it's like, I'm wondering when this whole NFT, I, I, I somebody wrote in I a whole rant about crypto and blockchain, all that bullshit last week. Mm -hmm. Somebody wrote me a, a very nice email that was not confrontational talking about how like, yes, NFTs are bullshit, but like blockchain has some potential as like an independent verification of ownership. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, I get that. Like yeah, that's valid, but, but the fucking NFTs, man, like they just, they're a fucking scam. Like they're yeah. a fucking money laundering scam. Apparently as near as I can tell, yeah. I've yet to see any reason to explain why they're not. Um. Yeah. Yeah. The argument is always like, no. -uh. <laughs> <laughs> right. Somebody's gonna give you twenty thousand dollars for the terrible ape, for the horrible ape that you have. Who's gonna give you twenty thousand dollars? Yeah, for your I ape? don't. Nobody. Who's gonna give you twenty thousand dollars for your ape, Becky? Um. <laughs> all right. I think we're gonna end on uh, a final scam. I okay. think we're, we're about to turn the corner and start going into like less just all bad news. Uh, so finally, uh, Razor has a fancy mask. Uh, they prototyped it a few years ago. Yeah. I was actually like, oh, that's pretty cool. I remember uh, we talked about this one the last time I was on the podcast. Yeah, this is the uh, man of the sequel. Yes. I like the original one had a case that had a UV light where yeah. you put it in and it would sanitize it. Right. Yeah. 
Uh, these do not. Uh, they also yeah. changed it so that it's... I yeah, it's not it's half as fucking cool it is. Yeah, 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 I remember. Anyway, one of the big ass things that was on their website was that it said that it had uh, N95 capabilities on the intake valves. Right. So there was a, a YouTuber called Naomi Wu who does like tech stuff and is very well endowed. Um, yeah, who... I thought that was <laughs> I thought that was a fake image. That was just her. Uh, yeah. Holy shit. Um, yeah. Wait till you see. What she's wearing like just. <laughs> holy oh okay uh, so anyway she got one of these yeah took it apart did some testing and was like this is not a 95 grade filtration that you have in the side of these things like these are not n95 filters yeah. in this mask um which okay it's a weird thing because you go off into this thing where like were you really buying the RGB mask because you thought it was going to be a medical grade technology? But even if you're not, if it says it is, but if it says that it is, that's the problem. Yes. That's where the problem lies. But if you are somebody that's like going to a concert or something where you're like, I want to look cool at my weird rave during the middle of a pandemic, but I also want to be as safe as humanly possible. Right. And then they falsely advertise a safer product than what it actually is. Yep. That's a concern. So she actually tweeted after she did this at like the, um, uh, at like w one of the companies that does N95 certification for masks saying yeah. like this company is saying on their website that this is an N95 certified mask. It is not. You have a policy that says like you're not allowed to fucking do that. Yeah. Uh, what you going to do? And this whole thing basically ended with um, Razor uh, just took that that off of their website. These that have been part of it, the like, part that or, said it was an N95 filter. Yeah. They just kind of deleted that out of the like features section of the mask. But these things have already been on sale. Yeah. Like it's kind of it's kind of shitty that they didn't try to make it right or anything. They just kind of were like, well, uh, yeah, you're right. It isn't. Uh, erase that part. And it's yeah. like, well, but it's kind of going back to the battlefield thing. Like people already gave you money for yeah. this. Like I don't know. I'm not, I guess I'm not saying that you have to. I don't know what I'm saying, but I think you should do more than just erase that off your website and pretend like it didn't happen. Yeah. So, yeah. And I think with that, we're going to take a break because uh, that's that's an hour and we've got a, a whole Woo! bunch more. Yeah. we got a lot more coming up, everybody. But this is the less bad. This is the less bad part than the second part. We'll see you in the second part. He had to hit the right tone. I had to get it. I hit the I hit the little uh, I hit the tuning fork <laughs> yeah. and I was like, mm, man, we're back. <laughs> uh, yes, we are back and we have way more news because there's never a week that isn't news and news and new more news. But I promise you that we have some good news. Good. So you promised me happy, polite, good, good, very good news. I did. So let's start off with some bad news. Um, <laughs> you son of you bamboozled me again. <laughs> you got heckin' bamboozled. Um, so Riot Games uh -huh. is the company that makes League of Legends and Valorant, and they also made that Netflix show whose name I can't remember. Uh, that was like everybody loved it. It was yeah. whatever. Yeah. And then they're actually making <laughs> five additional games that are not set in the legal that are set in the League of Legends universe, but they're not MOBAs. Yeah. So there's like one that Tequila Works is making where it's like this one of the characters in League of Legends is like a little Yeti with a kid that rides it. Yeah. And they're making like a little action adventure game with yeah, that. Yeah, and I remember the like, trailer and, yeah. for it and it looked really cute. Uh so the thing is that a few years back, Riot Games basically got kind of hammered the same way that Activision Blizzard got, where they were like, this is totally broed out. Like, it was obvious that this company was made by, like, some dudes, and that as it got bigger and bigger, it just kind of retained the same dude culture. Mm -hmm. And so there was a lot of that kind of shitty dude office culture where, like... I have... I have... <laughs> I, I'm not in any way or shape or form excusing it, but as somebody who's, like, worked at a big company and worked at, like, 
rage select, right? Mm-hmm. And like, we don't have an HR department. Yeah. We don't have like rules about stuff. Like, as we blew up, I can see where like you have to make a concerted effort to transition from the just like fucking hanging out with my friends, doing whatever, yeah. into like, this is a business. We have a handbook with a code of conduct in it type of thing. Yeah. So, anyway. Riot actually, they cleaned up their act. Uh, they had a bunch of stuff that came out to clean up their act. They actually had like a settlement that they raised last week from like $6 million to $100 million for like the women who were mistreated. And like part of it was going towards like raising their salaries, part of it was going to a long term program. Yeah. Uh, and so this year, the, or this year, this week, uh, the, was it the CEO, Niccolo Laurent, came out with this really long blog post that was like where Riot Games is going in the future. Mm -hmm. And like there's some kind of bullet points that I'll read off here from this uh, VG247 article. Um... When are genres maintaining their positions as genre leaders, unleashing fandom through gameplay and events, cultivating creativity and innovation within Riot, expanding development studios globally, and reinventing viewing experience for their esports events? All this lines up with what I've been saying, which is that like they're actually doing something that's really smart, in my opinion, where they're taking a beloved but difficult to get into property Mm -hmm. and expanding it into other properties where it's like, well, you don't have to learn how to play this horrible MOBA. Right. You just watch the Netflix show and be like, oh, I like the girl with the blue hair on the Netflix show. I'm going to dress up as her for Halloween this year. Or like, oh, here's a fighting game. So you can just be like, oh, I don't play those, but I'll play a fighting game. Right. Um, but then one of the other things that, that came out of this was this, uh, this these changes that he described. Five changes. Uh, one, reworking how we work. Two, continuing to evolve our culture to focus on our goals. Three, acknowledging our past and beginning a new chapter. Four, rewarding rioters so that they share and write success. Rioters are the name of the people that work at the company. Yeah. Uh, five, ensuring everyone at Riot feels good about where we're going and is committed to helping get there. Now I'm going to boil all this down because it's a fucking huge ass blog post. Yeah. What it basically is, is just like, we are trying transitioning over from a back slap and bro culture to trying to be way more inclusive trying to make sure that there's not like we people that feel bad a little bit yeah right and well and then like part of it is that he speaks specifically about like um about like not forgetting the past like knowing that we made mistakes but then using us be like we made mistakes and we're going to fix them and we're going to grow and we're going to remember them. that yeah. we made mistakes and not make them again in the future so you mean like a proper response <laughs> to things like this yeah wow i think they also i know I, I have to look it back up but i think they were also one of the companies that ended like forced arbitration and stuff Mm -hmm. like riot games when they first came out it was like i don't care about league of legends i don't play valorant like fuck those guys i don't give a shit yeah but like over the last year or so i'm just like well i like the fact that they're expanding into games that i would like to play and i like the fact that they seem to be taking this stuff seriously yeah and that they're not just like trying to say the things to make twitter not be mad at them and then going back to being pieces of shit like ubisoft yeah uh so And you know what? It's interesting because this is the first part of this story, but the second part of this story is shows you that this is not just them putting their, uh, they're not just making flat lip service statements Mm -hmm. because basically they, so Riot Games has this thing. I actually just read about this last week in a business journal, which how did I do that? What are you but, reading business journal? Know, when did that a, happen, It's my Jeff? news feed. Were and you like, like uh, oh, yes, today I'm going to be business Jeff. And I'm then business you Jeff, reading. yeah. You guys haven't <laughs> met that guy. He sucks. Uh, <laughs> we don't talk about business, <laughs> talk about Jeff. Business, Jeff. <laughs> so um, they had a, okay, so Riot Games had a thing called the Q Dodge program. Q Dodge is actually a reference to League of Legends mm-hmm. and like dropping out of a queue and, and getting penalized or not penalized or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and so like if you got hired on at Riot Games, Within the first six months of your employment to all employees, you could opt to leave the company and you would get 10% of your yearly salary right there to go. And I actually read an article that's talking about how more and more companies are doing this. And it's really interesting because it's like, we're going to go through the hiring process. We're going to hire you on. And then we're going to offer you a really big buyout to quit tomorrow to be like, well, the people that are serious about they want to like get stay, into this company yeah. and stay are going to be like, well, no, I want to work here. And the people that are just like kind of well, cash the paycheck yeah. are like, give me the fucking $5,000 and I'm fucking out. I'm just going to yeah, go sit on the couch like, for six yeah, months. Oddly enough that like, <laughs> even if I was like, I really want to work here, that idea is real mouthwatering of just like, just a little, 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 piece of money that i can just go and not work for a little bit so yes they've expanded this really and over the course of january 
any person currently working at Riot can take a 25% buyout of their yearly salary and three months of health insurance to boom out. And this is them saying, like, if you are a backslapping bro dude who's like, oh, this social justice sucks yeah, or whatever, this is like, a- here you go. Yeah. Here's some money. Thank you for your service. We're not putting you out high and dry in the middle of a pandemic. Yeah. Here's a quarter of your yearly salary. Fare thee well. Have yeah. fun. Go with our go with God, yeah. you know, and get out of here. Holy shit. Which is, is like. Oh, I want that so bad. <laughs> I want somebody to pay me to leave my job. <laughs> Although a quarter of my yearly salary would be um, sad. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to know. <laughs> well, it would be three months, right? Yeah. It's three months worth of worth of it's three months worth of pay and three months worth of health insurance to find another job. Yeah. Which honestly, man, I'm to be honest, like the thing is that again, I didn't like I don't like League of, League of Legends. I wasn't a big fan of the stuff that I heard about Riot Games. But all of this shit is like, hey, this is all positive. This is how like, businesses should do their do, you know what I mean? Yeah. And like last week we had a, you know, y- Ubisoft is just like losing people left and right. Yeah. Uh because other companies are like, hey, person who's worked here for 15 years, if I pay you double, will you come bring your 15 years of expertise into my video game? And they're like, fuck yeah, I will. Yeah. Like get me out of yeah. here. Also, we won't treat you like shit. And they're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> And like, meanwhile, you know, Act, Activision Blizzard is bringing in the union busting law firm yeah. and like, you know, telling people that they won't pay them if they decide to go on strike and like axing people and shit. They're, Activision Blizzard is going to end up creating a video game union and Riot Games, meanwhile, has like shifted their entire, not not just internally, but their external output has changed. Mm-hmm. Their internal culture has changed and it seems like they are putting the huge amounts of money that League of Legends makes to work to make their company better yeah so like i say good yeah, job right games yeah. like it's gonna be great until somebody buys them and then uh turns them into something monstrous yeah which I just, happens I, I, you hear about these places that are fantastic to work at and then they get bought out by a bigger company and that bigger company turns them into garbage yep and then they get to make one game and then it doesn't sell well enough and, and then they, they get go how dare you and yeah put into different studios the other thing that really uh, just really i just i can't gush enough about riot at this point was like i remember when i watched the thing where they were giving the the, the, the they were having other companies make the games and there's one to those companies with a big fucking dump truck full of money and they were just like which character do you want and what kind of game do you want to make yeah like we don't want to dictate it's, we want you to make the one you want to make and we're going to fund it it's so smart to open up their that like the their fan base just instantly opens up Mm -hmm. right because then if you like that one game and you go it's connected to this world of other games you either introduce people to the kind of gameplay that they didn't play before uh and didn't think they were interested in but now they're interested in the world or you at least have them invested in that world even if they don't play that game because that style like the other style of gameplays so it's it's so fucking smart what the hell is the name of that Netflix show? I know. This is not- Arcane. Arcane. God damn. Sorry to all <laughs> of you that lost your voice screaming at the at the thing. Um, I'm not sorry. <laughs> Amanda likes that. Yell. Part. Yell more. <laughs> Yell more and I'll be able to hear yeah. you. What's that? I can almost huh? hear you. Oh. Yell at your phone more. Oh, I think I heard a little <laughs> hint of a whisper over there. Oh, <laughs> uh, we're bad. Um <laughs> All right. In other, so that's great news. Yes. Uh, we've got this is um, call it neutral Middling. to bad news. Okay. Um, so Grand Theft Auto mm-hmm. parent company Take Two just bought Zynga. You know the Farmville guys. Yeah. For twelve billion dollars. Why? I mean, I the Farmville's a crazy money maker. Yes, that is why. Um, apparently, so, uh, Zynga just released. Farmville 3? Yeah. Uh, they also have like a bunch of like words with friends, po- poker, Harry Potter puzzles and spells, Weird. golf rival, like a bunch of, a bunch of stuff. So yeah. uh, Actually, a lot of the YouTubers I follow are sponsored by Farmville 3. Yeah. You know, if I had a lot of money, you know what I would buy? Raid Shadow Legends. And then I would just shut it down immediately. <laughs> <laughs> I would buy it and then I would burn it to the ground. And I'd be like... You're next, 
fucking Manscaped yeah. and Dr. Squatch. I'm coming for you. <laughs> I'm just going to buy like companies and turn them just, off yeah. so I don't have to watch your fucking ads on YouTube Like anymore. that wouldn't just make more horrible ads from different companies. The Dr. Squatch ones, man. They got yeah. like they got like 12 different ads. I'm just like, I don't want your soap, yeah. bitch. Like, I don't want it. Like, oh, uh, the worst is uh, when you start, like you search for mattresses and then now all the only ads you get are fucking mattresses. And now that <laughs> I said- Purple and pillow cubes. Oh my God. How many people can I watch fucking lay your down? Your pillow's wrong. Yeah. Are the like, we put a wine glass and then we had a five-year-old jump on the bed and it's like, why is that five-year-old near my wine glass? <laughs> also, who put it's a wine glass on your, your mattress. Be- yeah, That's I don't. Not necessary. It's such a weird test, like uh, uh, the luxurious drinking wine test. Um, so yeah, this acquisition made Zynga stock surge by forty percent and Take Two's decline by thirteen percent. I actually think that you see this a lot, like um, active. Not to just harp on Activision endlessly. I'm probably sure. But, but, you know, it's fine. But, you know, Activision <laughs> is Activision Blizzard King because they bought King, which yeah. makes Candy Crush. And I think that it's like, it's kind of like the way that, uh, you know, like Ubisoft has Just Dance. I think that a lot of these companies have like a mobile slash casual cash cow yeah. that allows them to like have less pressure on the like main division. Their whale and then yeah. everything else is just, yeah. or whatever it's called. They're which like, is fucking gross. Their but... piggy bank and then they just do everything <sighs> else. Anyway, yeah, well, um, Take Two sucks, and I hate them. <laughs> uh, I, I, I hate them so much. I hate them more now because fuck Farmville. Well, you know what? We're not the, you and I aren't the only ones. Yeah. Because apparently it's that time of year again where people are basically pleading with Rockstar to make any content for Red Dead Redemption online. Uh, there was a, a, a Red hashtag. Red Dead Redemption Farmville. Save Red Dead Online. Well, the thing is that it's really interesting because if you look at Grand Theft Auto Five, like what was it two months ago? Grand Theft Auto Five put out an expansion with Dr. Dre in it, where like your yeah. GTA Online character like hooks up with Dr. Dre and like I think the club dude, the gay Tony, yeah. to like do a thing and a story mission. And it's like meanwhile, Red Dead has like they their last update apparently was in July of last year, Ooh, that's... and like they did another thing that was like uh, some like XP bonuses or something, but yeah, it wasn't but not an actual thing, story like, content. Yeah, yeah. Um, which, uh, how many cowboy things can you do? Well, I don't know. You said there's, there's, I mean, some people have like, there's a whole, there's the whole Mexico part of the map. Like if you go into the Red Dead Redemption map, yeah. like if you go in RDR2 and you draw and you go all the way south, you can get to their version of the Rio Grande where Mexico's on the other side and people have hacked their way over mm-hmm. and like the land is all there. There's just not towns. And so people are like, this would Fill be perfect. Yeah. You know, I mean, look, like, I found a place for you to put stuff. Mexico expansion. I keep thinking that like if you don't want to do the online thing, um, because that makes a shitload of money for them in Grand Theft Auto, like... If you just remastered Red Dead 1 in the Red Dead 2 engine with the map that already exists Mm -hmm. that has Armadillo and Mexico and stuff and you just filled it in and then just like backfilled the Red Dead Redemption 1 in there and then sold it as like a a, here's Red Dead Redemption 1 in the RDR 2 engine. Mm -hmm. I'd buy the hell out of that. You know what I would do? And I wouldn't. I don't know if it'd be an expansion or anything, but I would do because I'm stupid. Uh, I would do. <laughs> buy Farmville. A three. And then close it down. Yes, <laughs> and then burn it to the ground. Uh, Twelve point six billion dollars well spent, if you ask me. <laughs> uh, I would make a uh, three amigos expansion <laughs> where you play like as these guys that people think are these heroes but they're actually not yep. and then they like the, their whole point is to protect uh, uh, a little Mexican uh, village mm-hmm. and, and just from like these uh, I would <laughs> Like you can actually do, like you could genuinely do it, and it'd be fun and silly and goofy, and it would have that rock star humor yep. very easily. Like I would a hundred percent just rip off Three Amigos. I want to. I want a Blazing Saddles. Oh <laughs> yeah, really? So Red Dead, what Red Dead should do is just like rip off really yeah. good comedy westerns. What's the uh, What's the What's the one where Clint Eastwood is the devil, where he fucks that town all up? Oh fuck! It was like the not Outlaw Josie Wales. That's a different one. Uh, what the hell? What was it called? High Noon, High Something, High Times, High. Uh, how high? Uh, <laughs> that, that, that's the one. Uh, devil? 
Let's see. Is that, he said Clint oh, Eastwood been plays in the devil. So many movies. The Beguiled? No. Rawhide. Oh my God. It's so hard to find stuff. High Plains Drifter. I think it's High Plains Drifter. Yeah. yeah a drifter arrives and is bullied by movie? three bad guys. He kills them and soon invites. The, uh, no, I haven't. It's great. It's, it's fucking psychotic. It's like, yeah, yeah. it's really weird. <laughs> oh, I'm going to look it up. That sounds weird. Um, all right. So uh, speaking of games that make money, mm-hmm. uh, there's been a bit of a kerfuffle. Okay, listen, there's this guy named Jeff Ross that used to work for a company called Ben Studios. Ben Studios made the game Days Gone, the mm-hmm. PlayStation zombie motorcycle uh, game. And... Uh, this guy is on Twitter and real fucking salty that like the, the the game that they weren't able to make a sequel and that the game didn't sell very well and it got canceled and all this stuff. Yeah. Um, and he is not like he is very I don't know. So what happened was there was a tweet where uh, the Game Informer wrote Ghost of Tsushima reaches another fantastic milestone with over 8 million copies sold. And this Jeff Ross guy comes in and he's like, at the time I left Sony, Days Gone had been out for a year and a half and a month and sold over 8 million copies. It's since gone to sell more and then a million plus on Steam. Local studio management always made us feel like it was a big disappointment. Hashtag Days Gone, hashtag PlayStation. Apparently there's a whole thing where they like pitched a sequel and Sony was like, no. Um, they didn't want it. So, you know, like it always sucks when your game doesn't do quite as well. Yeah. Um, I've seen this guy before, though, and he tends to think of Days Gone like it was a really, really good game. And like the general consensus was like, it was, a, an it was okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, he also apparently like his sales figures are based off of. Uh, this website that tracks the number of trophies that people get. Oh, which, yeah. Which, like, so it was like at the, you know, at one point they were talking about, oh, we've sold 5 million copies because there were 5 million, uh, like, individual trophies that were added, like, from 5 million users. And it's like, well, used games uh, yeah. get you the trophies. Rentals uh, get you the trophies. Like, there are ways to get trophies outside of paying full price for the video game. Yeah. Um, so a lot of it was kind of based on estimates. And then also, when he talks about studio management, apparently this was also um, Bend, the company that made it. It wasn't Sony. It was like Sony executives breathing down their necks. Yeah. It was their company's management um, that seemed like it was like they were disappointed. So this guy just can't handle rejection very well? Kind of, yeah. Mm, yeah. Yeah. A lot of it, too, seems to be that... Um, the Metacritic score wasn't very good, or it was like middling, and they expected a, a, a bigger score. So, yeah, I don't know. Another Sony news uh, Sony last week uh, they kind of had a big CES announcement about the PSVR 2. Um, one of the things that we missed because I think we recorded right around the time that that happened was uh, Steven Totillo asking uh, Sony whether or not the hardware launch in 2022 and whether it was going to be backwards compatible with the PSVR 1 games. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sony refused to basically answer either one of those questions. So we're still kind of waiting to hear. All right, Sony, <laughs> keep your secrets. Uh, yeah, I mean, the thing is that I don't know that I don't... It's weird to think about the idea that because of the supply chain, chain shortages of PS5s, Sony might not want to launch a new piece of hardware until there are more yeah. units that can use it, yeah. right? Because the na- amount of PSVRs that you can sell is going to be limited by the number of PS5s that are in the wild. Yeah. And that's I mean, would they limited. even be able to manufacture enough of the... The units themselves, yeah, to make it worthwhile at this point. <sighs> See, I I think it depends on the unit, but I don't think I think that a VR headset has significantly fewer because the big bottleneck is the chips. Yeah, and so true. like the the headset is doing some processing, but it's not doing near as much processing as the actual PS5. Right, I like think it's mostly screens and like optics and plastics yeah, and true. stuff like that. That's fair. There's some processing in there because the PS VR two. Uh, it doesn't use the camera. It uses the what the the uh, Rift Two does, where it has a bunch of cameras on the headset oh, and yeah. it tracks your room. Um, That's but, cool. Is that the uh, we're trying to prevent you from walking into your walls thing? Sort of. I mean, the thing is that like on good the, luck. I walk into my walls without a headset on. I remember. I will never forget. I really liked the game Arizona Sunshine mm-hmm. on the PSVR, but that game has a thing where so you've got the ice cream cone. PlayStation controllers in your hands and the big light on the top is how the PSVR knows where you are and there's a section of that game where you have a flashlight 
but the character is holding it with the light part on the bottom of their hand. So you're supposed to hold it up by your ear yeah. and then shine it. But the PSVR can't see the ice cream cone when it's behind your hand. Yeah. So it literally can't figure out where you're pointing the light. <laughs> and it was like, come on, guys, just put it the other way. Yeah. Just put it the other way and I'll hold it out like Scooby-Doo. Like, yeah. it's, it's fine. fine. It's yeah. fine. Um, in other Sony news, Sony announced that like they were going to be shutting down PlayStation 4 production in 2021. Oh, no, 2021, yes, at the end of 2021. But they're actually keeping PS4 production going because at this point, it takes a significantly fewer resources mm -hmm. and they can ship something that can play PlayStation games to retailers. So, Yeah, I imagine they're still selling really well. Yeah. I or mean, not really well, but, you know, they're still consistently selling. We're, you know, we're kind of on the tail end, maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah knocking on the wood of everybody needing to stay inside and play video games. Mm -hmm. So maybe if everybody goes outside, then like they'll all forget that they need consoles and a bunch yeah, of Yeah, and then maybe somebody nerds. else could get a fucking console. <laughs> Internet. Um yeah. God. Yeah. I'm really I'm 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 scared because I've got everything that I need, but I know that at some point there's gonna be a new switch and that's gonna be the biggest <sighs> pain in the dick to get. Yeah, John and I are like, <laughs> yeah, we were talking about a new switch coming out and we were like, Do we need a third switch? And I'm like, I think we do need a third switch. If it does four K and it runs games better than I the current one, I you know. Uh so the complete opposite in Xbox News. Uh, uh, X Microsoft announced that they're going to stop producing Xbox One consoles mm -hmm. and put all of their focus into the Xbox Series X and the Xbox Series S. I think this might be a little different because the Xbox Series S is a cheaper console mm -hmm. that retails for a little more than a, an Xbox One, but not like a huge amount. Yeah. And so there's already a lower priced option in the Series whatever uh, family for you to get. Yeah. So I think that makes a certain amount of sense. Yeah. In the long it's run. It's logical for yeah. each business to do what they're doing um, for Sony and Xbox. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't got one of them either. <laughs> Fucking poor. And then here I am waiting for the uh, oh, what's the Steam thing called? I can't think of it. The Steam Link? Uh, yeah. No. The, no. Uh, uh, the um, what the hell? Yeah. My brain is not functional today. Yeah. No kidding. What is it called? The Steam Link. Nope. That's not it. Brain. Stop saying. Stop saying that. Brain. <laughs> what's it called? Steam. The the Valve Index. Nope. That's no. not it. That's the Steam Deck. Steam Deck. God damn. Yeah. Sorry. <sighs> I, had to, I had to Google it. Otherwise, I was gonna die. <laughs> I would have been. I would have drove home. And like halfway to, to my house, just been like the Steam Deck. <laughs> we, need, we, need the, we need the you know you know how like radio shows have like a guy that Google stuff and then just like yells it. Yeah. When you're like, what's it called again, Steve? And yeah. they're like Steam Deck. And, like, then, we oh, keep, yeah, and yeah. then we keep talking, and then we, and then uh, Steve, what what was it? Right. Yeah, yeah. I love that's my favorite thing in podcasts when they have that. <laughs> um. All right. So. Microsoft might not be making Xbox One consoles, but I'll tell you what you can get. What can you get? You get the sickest thing. Guess who they're putting into Call of Duty now? Uh, of all of the properties in the Call world of Duty. that you could add to the Call of Fast Duty franchise. Fast and Furious. God. Vin that would, Diesel. That would be a great Tokyo idea. Tokyo drifting through Call of Duty. <laughs> I would love that. I know you would. Um, <laughs> no, it's Attack on Titan. What? Wait, on... Uh, in Call of Duty? Yeah. They've got like the Survey Corps yeah. outfit and like the swords and like some guns that are kind of themed after Attack oh. on Titan. And oh, okay. Like oh. a patch. Yeah. I mean, the thing is that Attack on Titan is back for its final, final, well, the, the second half of the final, quote unquote, the final, final season. Final season, yeah. Um, so, I mean, it kind of makes a certain amount of sense, but I seem, it just seems like. I can't think of a... This is some Fortnite shit. Yeah. Right? This is not what you would expect in Call of Duty. Um, I guess Call of Duty... Oh, I mean, eh, they brought like in Jigsaw and like Leatherface. Yeah, and their Halloween stuff is always... Their like zombie shit is they, always... I think they brought in like Rambo at one point and... Uh, Rambo makes sense for Call of Duty. Uh, I think John McClane was in there at some point. <laughs> like, he, was, he was a Marine. Uh, so, yeah. But yeah, it's weird. It's just a weird thing. Mm -hmm. It's just freaky weird. 
Freaky weird. It's freaky weird. It's freaking me out. Yeah. It's freaking me out. I would have never guessed it in a million years. <laughs> okay, so I have so I have a story for you though. Yes. I have a story for you. I'm here. Because you're not you're I'm definitely here and present and not in any way uh inebriated, intoxicated, or disassociated. All right. Uh there is a very, very, very good chance that this year we are going to see a new Mario Kart. Yeah. Uh so apparently there's been work going on for a while on a new Mario Kart game. Uh, this one apparently all all that we know this is from um, Sekren Toto, an analyst with Ken Ten Games, who says that Mario Kart Nine is in active development and will come with quote unquote a new twist. I don't know what that means. I don't know. Uh, um, Fast and Furious. <laughs> <it's Vin Diesel. laughs> Mario's voiced by Vin Diesel oh, now. No, it's a you know what the Mario. new twist is? It's going to be voiced by the Chris movie, Pratt? the movie actor. It's the movie version. Oh it's Street God. Fighter, the movie, the Mario Kart. I would be so upset. <laughs> um, what yeah, if I mean, it's like Smash Brothers where they just keep incorporating new characters, but they all just drive around? Could work. I'm trying to think of, with Nintendo, I feel like it's usually a thing where they have, they use the hardware in a way. Yeah. That like... I mean, yeah, they do like being like more innovative and really. So you turn the whole console, but that would be horrible. Uh, you can't do that with the light, though. Yeah, because it doesn't have that sort of. Isn't it a gyro? No. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah I don't I know. discovered uh, horribly that it doesn't because you know, like it, uh, it'll the console will um, vibrate for certain things mm-hmm. like hints and stuff. It doesn't do that for the light. Oh, so I can't. Um, I can't remember what game it was, but it was like you get closer and you can tell because it'll vibrate and I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> cool i guess i'll just assume it we'll just look online yeah um yeah i don't know uh like they already had what double dash had the kind of like two character thing yeah um, like they've incorporated going underwater they've incorporated flying they've incorporated drifting motorcycles motorcycles hard to say maybe it's an open world game Maybe it's like the... Oh, uh, that'd be kind of fun. Uh, what, Forza Horizon? Yeah. But in the Mushroom Kingdom where you yeah. can just drive around and well, then you get into races? what if it was like Battle Royale modes and stuff, right? Like, I guess they've done that, but... You know what I really want is I want it to be like Burnout 3 Takedown, where when you smash into Peach, it like goes into slow motion. Everything's like flying off of the that'd field. That'd be kind of fun, honestly. But they would never do that. Why not? Eh, it's too mean. They, they always want their... But these types of things to be like family friendly. But uh, fine. I don't know. I mean, maybe it's like, yeah, maybe it's a live service. Maybe it's like an MMO, right? And you drive around you mean, and yeah. talk to people. Would you be like um, like a death race or a? I mean, I not you know, but <laughs> that kind of like a more long distance thing, like you're going from one spot to another instead of uh, just like a circuit racing. Yeah. Yeah. I think the last I was when I was reading this article, I remember that the last Mario Kart thing that happened was the RC cars. Oh, we yeah, just set yeah. up the track. So, yep. Uh, let's see. Wahoo. From there, uh, a new South Park game is in development. Oh, God damn. South Park will not die. <laughs> I like South Park still, but, you know, that's just me. Yeah. I, uh, oh, I just mean, like, it's weird that I remember it from when I was a kid and, yeah. and it was just, like, actual paper animation and like it's still going it, it was cuss words and uh, fart jokes and now it's still going and now it's like digital animation to look like paper animation that's yep. uh, cuss words and fart jokes in the in the the, the post quarantine special it was okay but i think that's one thing that i really liked because they go to like the future mm-hmm. and it turns out that butters is locked up uh, in an insane asylum and he's created a new uh, like persona for himself and he, all he's doing is selling NFTs <laughs> and like if you talk to him for five minutes it's like then they come back and the person just has no money but they're like but I have this picture on my phone <laughs> and it's just like chaos like he goes into like a Bennigan's and just starts like making everybody give them all his money for uh, all their money for NFTs That's and it's amazing. great. Anyway um, this is being made by a company called Question Games that is in California and Virginia uh, there are a bunch of ex AAA developers, uh, but one of the parts of the job listings that we saw for South Park Digital Studios was looking for multiplayer experience. So there's a possibility Ooh. it would be multiplayer, which is a little weird because the previous ones were good because they were so uh, focused on narrative. Yeah, just making the jokes from the show. Yeah. So. I don't know. I've liked the Stick of Truth. I liked the Fractured Butthole. But the first uh, South Park game, the N64 game, was a multiplayer game. Yeah. It was like a Battle Royal shooty game, right? I think so. Well, not Battle Royal, but because it was N64. But most but of them yeah, sucked like, up until the... 
Yeah. Stick of truth. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. We also got um, an update. This is a kind of interesting. NVIDIA is updating the ray tracing filters on um, their video cards with mm -hmm. a driver update with a new thing. It's I, I hate the acronyms like DLSS is their thing. Deep learning super sampling, which is the thing where it renders it at 1080 and then AI brings it up to 4K by interpolating what goes between the pixels instead of rendering it. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a new thing that they're updating called DLDSR, Deep Learning Dynamic Super Resolution, uh, which does kind of similar stuff. Uh, you guys get into the nitty gritty of this, but there's one thing that they um, there's one thing that they're adding called SSR TGI, which is screen space ray trace global illumination. <laughs> There's a lot. There's a lot. Uh, I know. The big thing to come up, this is a thing that applies to some of the consoles as well, is that um, some of these AI functions that we're seeing are able to, like, if you load up an old video game and the old video game has, like, lighting, the card is able to say, well, I know what lighting is, but I'm going to render it as if this was made in a modern engine instead of an old engine. Mm -hmm. So it's able to take the lighting from like an old game and then enhance it just by being like, I know what the lighting it does. Yeah. So we're going to up it and then we're going to wrap it around your textures and make it look better. And then you can take textures that looked okay and basically upsample them on the fly with this AI stuff. Basically, it's kind of an interesting thing to think about how like, I feel like there used to be that there was an upper limit on how good old games could look because all you could do is just make them as higher resolution as possible with as much detail as was in them when they were put out. Yeah. But I feel like we're starting to reach a thing where it's like you could literally make an old game look better, way better than it used to running it on one of these new cards with some of these new options, which is an interesting thing. Uh, we're already seeing that some on the... Uh, the Xbox has this frame rate boost where they'll take old games and then boost them up to 60 frames per second. So it'll be like, oh, here's Skyrim, but it runs at 60 frames per second on the new console or yeah. whatever, um, which is cool. It's all cool. And this is a free update, so it's not like you have to have oh, nice. something new. Uh, let's see. Uh, Elden Ring uh, is a thing. And um, they had a the character, some footage from the character creation engine leaked out. Yeah. Uh, which is i know not the biggest story in the world but it's like <laughs> but i'm really excited and i want to talk about it well you know this is bloodborne this is dark souls 3 this is elden ring Ooh, so like okay yeah it looks like the characters look a lot more like a person now mm -hmm. and less like a kind of a wax mannequin so yeah. uh but the the video uh, which they've they're playing whack-a-mole taking it down because mm -hmm. it's an earlier build and they don't want to show it uh shows that you can also you have control over all the sliders which um all the souls games starting i believe with bloodborne have had a thing where you could literally just like make a monster deform the faces into a crazy thing yeah. yeah um so but that's not the most important thing amanda yes that's not the most important thing about elden ring <laughs> I feel like it is. It's not. Well, because maybe you're the wrong. Subreddit is trying to decide whether or not the shadow right here from the trailer is a dong on a horse. Whether the horse has got the dongs or not. You gotta you gotta find out. You gotta find out. Hey internet. <laughs> Why, why are you like this? Did you know that, that several years ago when there was a big drought with Elden Ring news, uh, the Elden Ring subreddit started making up their own lore for Elden Ring and then arguing about it? Jesus Christ. <laughs> no, but that sounds about right. So, yeah. The question is, is this shadow on this horse a dong or just the other foot of the guy riding it? Who knows? Is that a horse? Or it's like a deer horse thing okay. or like a goat. It's got horns. I don't know. Or like thing. four ears. I don't know. It's or it's a duck looking the other direction. <laughs> that's right. It's a duck. Do you see? Who, like, yes, that's no, the I see. <laughs> Is it a rabbit or a duck? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is an old lady or a young woman. Yeah, I don't know which exactly. one. Um, is it a dong or is it a foot? <laughs> is it a dong or a foot? <laughs> My vote's always dong, right? Yeah. This I, is oh, Rachel yeah. Lang, Hello. So. Welcome to dong a We yeah. uh, definitely vote dong. Um. And then let's see. We also got news. Uh, this is off of Reset Era that was a huge leak that seems to indicate that From Software is going to make something that's not a Souls game, uh, which is Armored Core. So 
Armor Core is a series that goes back to PlayStation 1, big mech combat game. Yeah. Hidetaka Miyazaki, who made Dark Souls, like uh, his last game before he started going in on the Souls was one of the Armor Core games, writing for it and stuff. Um, you know, they've kind of been trapped just making Souls games. Yeah. But apparently they are in the middle of making a new uh, mech game. Uh, on you go to reset era and there's like a bunch of screenshots that have like watermarks through them. Yeah, so they are watermarked to, to hell. Yeah. It's uh, like I'm looking at them through blinds. It's really weird though because according to the description it's like I mean, let me read you this. In the past, this substance caused... Oh, no, wait. Uh, there is an unknown substance called melange. Melange? Yeah, like okay. from Dune. Uh, in the past, this substance caused a cosmic catastrophe on the planet Bashtar that engulfed the surrounding star systems, and eventually it, its very existence was lost. Decades later, the melange reaction was confirmed again on the planet Bashtar in search... Uh, the unknown substance that should have been lost. Various speculations begin to swirl parties. All the armor core games are intensely political. Yeah. Um, but what's interesting about this, though, is that in 2017, there was a rumor that this was happening. And part of that rumor was that Ty Frank was working with them to write the uh, lore or some of the story for it. Ty Frank is... Um, one half of the pseudonym James S.A. Corey, which is, is the writer of the Expanse um, franchise okay. um, with the Amazon show and whatever. But those guys are also um, James uh, George R.R. R. Martin's like personal assistants. Oh. And he wrote a lot of the lore for Elden Ring. So it's like there is a very clear like, oh, well, we knew George from Elden Ring and we're making a new thing. And we're like, oh, we all love the Expanse. Do you want to come on and do some Expanse writing? And then... Pfft, so the only thing is that um, every time I've tried to play an armor core game, they're intensely repetitive and mm -hmm. I'm not in it for do this mission five times. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. So I, I hope that I, feel it's like I remember an armor core video that you did or something. I think Jason and I played armor core for answer for the loading bar. Yeah. Uh, OK. And I think it was that would explain why I remember it because, yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's it's. I mean, the games themselves look really nice. Mm -hmm. It's just the problem, and they they play really good. I've always wanted to be really into them. So like Armored Core Four Answer, because it was Miyazaki introduced these like building sized mech bosses. The mm -hmm. thing you had to like fly up with your mech and kind of go around. So like a big boss that takes a while to beat. It's like oh gee, where did all the bosses in Dark Souls come from? Yeah. Um, so I really hope that they take a lot of the accessibility stuff that has happened with the Souls franchise mm -hmm. and realize that if you just make me play the same mission over and over again, I'm going to quit and not play right, it. Right, so. yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. Um, yeah. Let's see. Uh, maybe we'll find out more at E3 this year. Uh, but E3 also announced that in 2022, it's going to be online only, which I'm actually a big fan of. I'm fine. It's uh, not like I'm going to be there, so yeah, I mean, do like it online. It's always online only for me. <laughs> well, when you have it in a building, like, I don't get to see everything. Whereas when you have it online, it's like, well, we're trying to show everybody everything. So yeah, um, it would it'd be nice if it was a little smaller. I don't think, though, that Microsoft or Sony have signed on because last year it's like it was Didn't they do their own thing? Yeah, they did their own yeah. independent thing. But Devolver, yeah. UB... Um, I'm only here for Devolver. Nintendo. So whatever. Nintendo. You're here for Nintendo. Nintendo does directs all the time. I don't need E3 from them. Yeah, but they're going to announce when Breath of the Wild 2 is coming out. I didn't even play Breath of the Wild 1. They want to tell me when Luigi's Mansion 4 comes out. Bayonetta 3 is, is oh, coming out this yeah, year. Oh, fuck God. You're right. <laughs> maybe they'll talk about the what's going on with that Mario Kart. Yeah, maybe so. Ow. <laughs> All right. From there, we got the trailers. Uh, let's see. Well, actually, we kind of had a big kind of trailer plus announcement. So uh, Hitman is Hitman. a game. Never heard of it. Amanda knows nothing about yeah. Hitman. Wasn't forced to sit through me playing all three games. Yes. Um. <laughs> no, you're right, Jeff. It's, it's so interesting that these characters will just go through these paths, and if you sit and listen to them talk, you'll un you'll see a <laughs> minor storyline that has nothing to do with anything. Oh, hush. I know. I actually, I mean this it's completely genuinely. I super enjoyed doing the Hitman games with you. It was uh, so far yeah. or the the Hitman levels with you yeah it was very fun well it was great for me too because like i wanted to do like kind of the definitive version and so it meant that i would spend the entire week playing the level right up to the point where we got to play it yeah and it gave me things like when we played the um 
we played the Berlin level and I killed all 13 of the agents yeah. in one go instead of just like the three that you need to get yeah. out of the level or whatever. It, yeah, it was um, honestly very fun to be like, let me show you this Easter egg. Oh, this thing happens. Oh, let's go through the level real quick. I kill this person in two seconds so yep. that we can do something fun or funny over here. That shit was, that was a blast, honestly. YouTube quit stitching on my viewing habits. So, uh, <laughs> now there's, I know. <laughs> there's a few things that are going on. They actually announced this before. There's a thing called the Elusive Target Arcade. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is a series of elusive targets that happen like one, two, three. Mm-hmm. So the elusive targets were the ones where they would come and then you would have to like kill, you had like a week to kill them. Yeah. And you had one shot. And if you didn't do it, then you would, uh, they it's were gone. That, yeah. And the thing is that I don't know if a lot of people know this, but like there are a lot of unlockable outfits in Hitman and you get those by doing elusive targets. I didn't have time to fucking schedule my week around playing Hitman levels. Yeah. Um, but elusive sure. target arcade <laughs> <laughs> is maybe more interesting because the thing is what they're doing is they're setting up this thing where you have three elusive targets in a row that you have to do like mm-hmm. an escalation uh, but if you fail apparently it's just got like a 24 hour cooldown timer and then you could try it again so you have to play That's, by the rules but yeah. you can keep trying until you get to it which is more what I'm about I'm mm-hmm. not about this one shot no shot yeah stuff yeah I'm not uh, a good enough gamer for that to be a thing I would just I mean I did a few it'd be like one shot oh, I failed uh, yeah. next time I uh, failed again like first two minutes so I did I mean like there was a guy online that had tutorials on how to do them mm-hmm. I did a few where I just did that yeah. I think I think at one point we recorded the Sean Bean one uh, not I don't think it was you and I but I did that with somebody the undying yeah. uh, so that was one of the updates that they had uh, they also showed that um, the so this is year two uh, Hitman 3 was an Epic Game Store exclusive, but in January of this year, Epic uh, uh, Hitman is coming. Hitman 3 is coming to Steam. Nice. Uh, and then also, it's coming to Pia or not to Steam VR, mm-hmm. so you can play it in VR. Uh, the PSVR version was apparently not great. Like it had a low resolution mm-hmm. because of kind of the limitations on the PlayStation Four. Like I don't even think there was a PS Five version. I think you had to use the you had to launch like the PS Four version of Hitman Three in order to play Hitman VR. Um, but they talk a little bit about like the various things you can do. I, I actually kind of like it. they show uh, throwing things. They yeah, there's like a montage of things getting thrown at people. Of throwing things. Well, apparently the way that you throw things, um, the way that you so in Hitman, it's like you know you just like aim at somebody's head and then you can throw a snowball, right? Yeah. Apparently in the VR version, you aim by putting your left hand out and like wherever your left hand is pointing, that's where you're going to hit. Like you're going to call your shots. Right. Like, like, you can't, well, no, like you put your left hand out and then you like wind up with your right hand. And then when you throw it, it just goes wherever your left hand was pointing. Yeah. Which is kind of a cool thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. This looks from the footage that they're showing like it's got a lot more um, fidelity than the PSVR version. Yeah. Um, I feel like this is kind of just the dick around version of it. Man. Yeah. Like, nobody would choose just to play Hitman in, in VR, but uh, yeah, so that's happening. Uh, from there, they talked about um, uh, ray tracing. They're bringing ray tracing, but just to the PC version mm-hmm. at the moment. Like they don't, I don't think they have any plans to put on the Xbox or the PS5. Uh, um, there's some other technical stuff that's that's getting added. Intel Arc is Intel's new gaming uh, video cards that they're trying to get into the market with. So Arc, I believe, is the DLSS of Intel video cards, and apparently they're working with them to make sure that it's like sharp. They also have this other tech that I didn't really understand that's just like optimizing the entire thing to make it play better, which is cool. Uh, the big announcement was probably the. Um, uh, well, actually, one big announcement was that they're going to be packaging the entire thing into the Hitman trilogy available on Steam uh, on the 20th and Xbox Game Pass and Game Pass on the PC. Ooh. So, you, got, get, fucking, you guys. You, you got it. You play I, it. I enjoy it. Like, I don't know how to tell you this. Like, I, you know, th- they put all the, they put that Mass Effect trilogy the entire thing on the Game Pass. Like, yeah. Rainbow Six Extraction is on Game Pass. Nobody Saves the World, the new Drinkbox Studios game coming out next week is on Game Pass. Like, if I can, they, there's so much shit on Game Pass, man. Yeah. Like, um, in the spring, there's a new mode called Hitman Freelancer that I think is really cool, where it's basically like you start in like a safe house and you pick like a contract selection 
of various contracts in the various areas that are different characters. And then you have to go out and get them. But like... Um, you said it was like roguelike when we talked about it? Or yeah. Or seem kind of roguelike? Well, the way that they made it sound was that like one, they were going to be randomizing who the target was so that it's like, it's not, it, you just, it's a different person. I think they might even have said that they're going to be like disabling the the just like see who your target is vision yeah oh they said that for the final target it's like you are gaining intel off of the previous targets so the final target will not be like lit up in red yeah. like you have to figure out who they are Ooh. uh and then apparently as you get money you will be using that money to purchase equipment because you're not just going to be able to drag fucking eight years worth of what is it 2016 to 2022 six years worth of unlocks yeah. into every mission, which Ooh. is great. Yeah. Because like the unlocks just make this shit trivial in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, and then if you like die, you can try the same target again, but like you will lose anything that's on you. Or if you use things that have like, um, like if uh, like grenades or something, like once you throw them, they're gone and you have to buy more grenades. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it looks like a lot of this, the money that you get, you can outfit this little chalet, this this safe house that 47 has with different stuff, which is cool. Oh, what, are you going to make Hitman into a game you can play forever and ever? Never yeah. having oh, to stop? No, that ouch. sounds terrible. Just kidding. I want to uh, give it to My me. arm, ouch, stop it. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, so, and this is also the house that they showed in their little teaser, which is pretty cool. There's like this whole shot. This is what they're talking about. You have to have the intel to know who to kill. Apparently, it's a dude with a man bun. Yeah. Uh, oh, I'll kill him. Uh, Don't worry. I didn't need intel to know that I needed to kill the guy with the man bun. <laughs> yeah. You know what I really? You know what I want the most from Hitman, Amanda? What? Like the existing Hitman thing? Uh, Fast and the Furious. Vin <laughs> Diesel. Vin Diesel. <laughs> that, Vin That's my Di running theme today. Vin Diesel NFTs. That's what I want. In the, the, oh no. Lord. Uh, no, I want the I want the ability to make. I want a movie maker mode Ooh. because I love their promotional materials. Yeah. I know they have a tool that can do it, but like some of those places where they like, <laughs> they create these shots, like these slow motion shots that we're seeing in this montage yeah. of like the bosses of like what him like walking uh, down yeah, the hall. You're, and yeah. Like, you're totally right. That is super cinematic. Um, like I was hoping when they put the camera in that they would have the ability to do something like that. Uh, because I always wanted to do it. Like if they, if they had a camera, if they had a camera replay system where you could, even if you could just record like a a run and then edit it and just play it back with and then say like, and then we get to this part, I want you to move the camera over here and move the camera over here. Um, even if they did that, I would spend time like just making the Hitman movie, yeah, the 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 the, the World of Assassination movie because I love it so much. Yeah. But, um, so yeah. And then all that, and then they ended with. Uh, oh, I love this shot with the with the butler in the the uh, <laughs> mansion, just like turning just as he walks out of the. Yep. Anyway, uh, the whole thing then ended with a very brief look at like an actual new level. Like yeah. I think we thought that the safe house was a new level. This is like a jungle level with like a like a rope bridge, and there's like a communications tower and a little like fishing village. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, I like the. Um, the jungle levels, I liked the South America mm -hmm. level that had all the, the hippo and the crocodiles and all oh, that crazy yeah. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, I uh, yeah, I hope there's more. Well, there's obviously more. This isn't like a trick. <laughs> they're not going to show this. And then, yeah, like, and then they're like, JK, no. <laughs> that was Hitman 4. Isn't that neat? Anyway, goodbye forever. Well, that's the thing is that they can't be lying because they're making the James Bond game next. So they can't be working on a new Hitman game. All this has to be for the existing Hitman yeah. game. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, my God. It's too... Oh, shit. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. All right. We're in fast motion. Uh, we got some trailers. Show up American Story. Amanda, what did you think? I thought it looked awesome. It looked... Uh, you had said that it reminded you of uh, No More Heroes. Yeah. Right? And it... Yeah, I definitely get that vibe. It looks fun. Yeah. I like the, like, alternate history, Japanese, America... It's like a grindhouse kind of. Yeah. Japan took over America, and so it's like dusty America, but with all this Japanese stuff kind of in it. Yeah, the like they just like slam together two cultures. You know what it reminds me of what? is um, uh, no more heroes by way of six string samurai. Ooh, <laughs> that's a the, good one. The yeah. kind of dusty plains full yeah, of yeah. zombies. Uh, yeah, that's the great way of uh, describing it. No one knows what six string samurai is, but I approve of the uh, description. Yep. 
Um, yeah, yeah, it looks good. It's, it's, it's a little cheesy, but I'm hoping that it's like charmingly cheesy. I like cheesy. Yeah. Like if I'm playing an action game, it's got to have a little hokiness to it. Cause like, I don't give enough of shit about like a serious gameplay. You know what I mean? Right. Like it's not for me. So like once you add that little tongue and cheekiness to it, especially cinematic style where yep. it's, you know, you could make this into one of those weird movies that only seven people know about it. And it's the, you haven't seen it. Oh my God. Yeah. Uh, that's it's, it was, that's for me. That's like what it's a, for me. Like a um, like deadly premonition. Mm-hmm. Like a what? Like a B. Yeah. A, a B game. Like a cult B game. We yeah. don't have enough cult games uh, out like, there. Uh, anything like my close personal friend uh, Suda Fifty One. Yes. Who follows me on Twitter still? <laughs> just pointing it out. Uh, yeah, we got a reveal uh, of both game and release that Serious Sam is having a standalone expansion uh, called Siberian Mayhem. That is just Serious Sam in Siberia uh, doing the Serious Sam. So he's definitely Sam- salmon it up seriously. Salmon you know what I mean? some seriouses. Uh, I'm not, I've never been the biggest fan in the world of Serious Sam. Same. Um, it just seems like very kind of... It looks um, busy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, it's too much going on. Um, it's like, fun. But yeah, it's coming January 25th. Nice. I do appreciate the fact that they made it a standalone thing as opposed to yeah. you have to have the first one. Um, yeah. Let's see. We got a Far Cry f- uh, 6 Control DLC uh, um trailer that's the pagan men one pagan men is my favorite of all the is far he? cry bad guys so are you looking forward to this one no <laughs> uh it's, apparently it's just the same f- um format. roguelike yeah. format as the boss one uh which i think is a real step back because far cry 5 had the vietnam one mm-hmm. the on mars comedy one yeah and then there was like a comic book uh vampire hunter was the third one i remember that yeah uh and this one appears to be that all three of these where they're like all the villains are coming back and for the first one with voss it was like oh the definition of insanity Mm -hmm. blah 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 blah, right doing the same roguelike over and over again oh they make sense with pagan men i'm like do it a different thing yeah i paid for the season pass don't just put a new skin on it and tell me what it is but i don't know they're just too busy making uh Ghost Recon Breakpoint NFTs. Uh, Yes. In other Ubisoft news, we got a Rainbow Six Extraction trailer that uh, went over the lore of what's happening in Rainbow Six Extraction. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of glad this is going to be on Game Pass so I don't have to actually buy it because it appears to just be Left 4 Dead slash uh, GTFO uh, slash Rainbow Six. Um, It's it's weird. I don't don't know. Uh, It's got... It's a very interesting concept. Like, we're going to take our Counter-Strike game and then spin those characters into this weird co-op zombie fighting game, except they're not zombies anymore. Yeah. Uh, I think I liked it better when they were zombies, but I don't yeah. know. Yeah. I mean, decent idea that I don't understand. Maybe Back for Blood was also a problem. Oh, uh, yeah. Actually, uh, one interesting thing about this is at the end, it seems like the characters doing the narrating talks, and they're like, oh, we thought we were ready. And they kind of show what appears to be like a like the the weird virus goopy stuff that's making up everything Mm -hmm. like a version of the hammer guy from their crew but like the that stuff Mm -hmm. making me wonder if there's going to be like elite enemy units or whatever anyway glad it's on game pass glad i don't have to pay full 60 dollars for it yeah uh ubisoft is also bringing assassin's creed to the switch it looks okay Amanda, yes, you've waited long enough. Kirby in the Forgotten Land. This is the only reason I'm here. <laughs> That's the only reason you're here. Uh, there's a new Kirby in the Forgotten Land trailer, Yay! and it's a co-op trailer. Yep, showing a bunch of stuff. You Are you telling me that we're gonna play this game? Oh, we're, gonna, we're gonna play co. We're gonna co-op it and uh, definitely work together. Of course. Yeah, hundred percent work together. I feel like that the 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 whole business model, business Jeff of Rage Select, he's like, so the whole business model is that Amanda comes over here every week and records with me, and then I give you like one Kirby game or Yoshi game yeah. a year. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, here, take it. Yeah. Get it the fuck out of my house. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, yeah. Whenever I talk about working on a YouTube channel, I never tell my uh, boss or anyone like what channel it is because I don't need that kind of pressure on me. Sure. But they're always like, "Wow, do you make a lot of money?" And I'm like, "I make a lot of Kirby games." <laughs> I get paid only, only, Kirby only games. exclusively in Kirby <laughs> games. I think I've gotten a Pokemon once. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Jeff was like, let me give you money. And I'm like, bitch, get me Kirby. <laughs> it would save me money. Uh, 
Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so <laughs> that, it's in the contract. <laughs> Kirby looks good. Uh, we got the. We did get a few Pokemon trailers. Oh, so at the is. end of the month, Pokemon Legends. Uh, Arceus is out. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you know about this. I don't know if you've been following this. This is like a prequel to all of Pokemon. Yeah. So it's like medieval when they're just inventing Pokeballs and like you're making the first Pokedex. Yeah. I haven't. I I kind uh, of want it. Yeah. I haven't decided. Yeah. But I like I, I've been like itching for a new game and like I love I know a lot of people that are very like eh, you play one Pokemon game we've played them all but like I like replaying these games yeah. so i it, part of me is real thinking about it plus they've done a lot like you sh- i recommend we didn't watch this one but i recommend you watch this because like i don't know if you've seen this but like there is this is not a like walk and then run into a pokemon there is like a lot of like kind of breath of the wild dna where it's like yeah you can creep on the map up behind pokemon and throw a ball at them and just catch them right away yeah there's like different pokemon to help you they show it early in the trailer you can like use them to hit this tree to get the nuts out of then you can use the nuts to build potions for your guys yeah so it's like it's different than the the traditional pokemon model like here they're using a fruit to lure a psyduck out lure of a psyduck so that they don't see you so that you can then grab them and then yeah. do whatever so there's some interesting stuff going on here in fact, in the 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 most powerful um, Pokemon out on the map, on the map they'll actually like attack you, and you have to like hit them with enough stuns to get them to a place to even battle. Yeah. So there's like a whole separate thing. Um, and you ride Pokemon. Yep. So there's a lot going on. There's I'd be l- like on a magic car, like let's go. <laughs> and it's like. Woo! Stop. Oh, it's, it's dead. Just, it's been dead for a while now. You're just sitting on a Bidoof. And it's just like, <laughs> I don't go anywhere. I don't give a shit. I'm just going to hang out. <laughs> um, yeah. So they show a lot going on here. There's a lot there's a lot uh, happening. Stop convincing me to buy it. There's also all this like customization. You could do your little character. Get out of here, Poppy. I was going to say, uh, that Poppy ad is freaking me out. <laughs> it's just eyeballs staring you down. So there's like noble Pokemon. That's what Ooh, I'm talking about. With, like, the big yeah, yeah, ones. Yeah. You have to quell their frenzy. By hitting them with bombs before hey, by you By going, jeez, why don't you just calm down? Yeah, God, That's, dude. That always calms me down. <laughs> throwing bombs. <laughs> Slap. Bam. <laughs> just hit them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. It looks fun. And then, like, last but not least, we had Far uh, Changing Tides release date announcement that finally came out. Yeah. Uh, this looks really good. Sequel to Far uh, Loan Sales. Uh, it's coming out March 1st. Uh, if you guys don't remember, I think Chris and I played this a million years ago. Mm-hmm. The previous one was actually, I think the previous one was more, I guess it was 3d. I seem to remember it being very 2d, but mm-hmm. this one, you got a, like a big ship you can get out of it. And I like it cause it's like, you literally have to go around inside and like Make crank this thing yeah. and like put this wire over here to restart the thing. And so it's kind of fun that way. Yeah. That looks really fun. Yeah. Just PlayStation? It's PlayStation exclusive? Uh, I PS think it's on the PS5 Five, and PS4. PS4. So, okay. yes, indeed. Okay. It'll eventually come to everything I'd be willing to bet. Because I just, I things like that where it just seems like like on the Switch handheld would be really fucking nice. I'm wondering, though, by looking at this, if this is, if they would have to, to cut the amount of detail they'd have to cut to get it running on the Switch would that make is, it look kind of... Yeah. Uh, what if I got the, a fancy new Switch? Maybe so. This one need a fancy new Switch? Fancy new Switch. Uh, I actually have a... a I bought a whole thing that, that just... It takes the output from my Switch and just runs a sharpening filter over it. Really? To make everything sharper on my oh. TV. Uh, I was using it for Shin Megami Tensei before I stopped playing it. It's kind of cool. Uh, okay. Far Changing Tides also is going to be on Game Pass Day 1 in March. Oh, nice. Cool. So I guess that explains it's also going to be on the Xbox. That was just a PlayStation trailer that I showed ah, you. So. Heard. Um, in fact, this... Yeah, Game Pass. I didn't, dun, dun, I didn't dun, read all this. Oh, it's uh, uh, also Switch. Yeah. PlayStation Switch and PC ooh, ooh. on Steam and Epic Game Store everywhere. So, hey, there you go. Yeah, I'm definitely going to play it. Boom. That's a, that looks like a me game. Uh, as I mentioned before, the entire Mass Effect Legendary Edition is on Game Pass. Yes. Uh, which, you know, if you've never played Mass Effect, get... I don't even know how the fuck you're supposed to play all the games that are on Game Pass now. <laughs> I know. Like, there's so many. Too many games, man. Like, I keep waiting for them to be like, oh, we're putting Mass Effect on and we're taking, like, The Witcher off. Yeah. And then it's like, nope, here's no, more. No, yeah, just keep adding it. Uh, but I actually... I have the I have the best one yes. for you. Uh, are you aware of the game paparazzi no so 
paparazzi is a game where you take pictures of dogs. <laughs> oh, it's a sea dog. And they don't move. They just like they're like wooden dogs, so they yeah. just kind of hop around. Yeah. Like they don't bend. Their tails wiggle though. Uh, and oh the, my god! Uh, whole game is taking pictures of dogs. Yeah, it's coming out this month. Yeah, it's gonna be on Xbox Game Pass. Okay, good. We're gonna play it. Hell yeah, we're gonna play it. I think it comes out next week. Actually, that's but. fucking cute. <laughs> Look how cute that is. I was amazed you didn't know about this. I think I maybe told you about the um, the bird picture game, the taking pictures yes. of birds game, which also looked adorable. But you know, um, dogs. Yeah. Is that dog in space? Dogs in space. Oh, Skateboard no, my heart. The dogs. Full here's sequential. Some, here's some dogs. You can customize your dog. Put clothes on dogs. He has shoes on, Jeff. <laughs> oh, I love dogs we're, so much. We're having a dance party. Yep. Paparazzi. Oh, my God. I love it. Uh, and it's coming out January 20th. Is that next week? That is a week from today. Oh, my God. You and I will be playing hell, paparazzi. Hell, yeah. <laughs> paparazzi. This is the other way that I pay Amanda. Is it like, like, do you want to play a dog yeah. game? <laughs> uh, I found this adorable game. Do you want to play? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so that's the good news. Bad news on the Xbox Game Pass is we were going to be seeing Stalker 2, uh, I believe, like in early, uh, oh, April 28th. And it's moved from April 28th to December 8th. It's got pushed back by seven months. Oh, wow. Why? Um, is there a specific reason? or? It ap- well, okay. So the cheeky answer is they announced like three weeks ago they were going to put NFTs in and everybody had such a huge reaction to it. Yeah. So they're going to take NFTs out and th- they need seven months to fix that. But <laughs> they said these additional seven months of development are needed to fulfill our vision and achieve the desired state of the game. Stalker 2 is the biggest project in the history of GSC and it requires thorough testing and polishing. We're convinced that development should take as long as necessary, especially in the case of this project i also i mean i this is like full wild speculation but i'm starting to think that like between cyberpunk and and battlefield yeah you can't put out a broken game oh also that it could be microsoft because it's going to be on game pass and i think they're they're funding it in a way to say no we want to make it so that when the game comes out it works like we're tired of this shit we want functional games on game pass we don't want a busted ass game that you're gonna have to fix later yeah I support it. I I will always rather wait a little longer for a game than get a rushed garbage. What which um which deodorant company's uh um motto was you never get a second chance to make a first impression or is that like uh is that like a, a head and shoulders or something like yeah. that? Uh yeah, uh I can wait long enough and then play a really great game. Or it could be bad. And, and then, then I could I'll have never to, go back to it if it sucks. It's hard. Like, even if they fix it. Like, I'm not going to. I moved on. Well, especially now. Yeah. In 2016, maybe there would be time. But now it's just like fucking, okay, here's a game with dogs. Here's the fucking Left for Dead. Uh, with uh, yeah. The, oh, I'm sorry. Thing. You want me to play garbage when <laughs> Paparazzi is out? Here's I'm the sorry. Cthulhu dating game. Yeah. Here's the fucking uh, new Pokemon game. Here's, you know, yeah. like all these games. There's too many games. Anyway. Uh, all Too right. Too many games on the dance floor. Too many games. For the end of this, we always have some fun stuff. Yes. Today's fun stuff is Oops All Mods. Oops All Mods. Oops All Mods. The first mod is a mod that called Doomed that turns... Demons of the Nether. Minecraft. Demons of the Nether is actually what they used to call me <laughs> in high school. <laughs> it turns Minecraft into oh Doom. Oh my God, that's Doom so amazing. Uh, the, I, I like it all the way except for the guns because yeah. they just have like kind of regular versions of the guns. But it'll actually like I mean you know, it's not like there's a real good gun substitute in in Minecraft. Minecraft. You're yeah, not shooting things. But, but it very much looks like it plays and oh, it's, it's those look so cool. It's super like fluid. Um yeah. and they like drop the items just like they do in, in Doom. Oh. They would say there's stuff like if you throw a grenade at the caco demons, like they gulp it like they do in Doom. So uh That's really satisfying to look at for some reason. Yeah. You want to play Minecraft, but you don't want to fucking have to build a bunch of shit. Yeah, I want to destroy things. Yeah. So this is created by one developer over the course of a year and uh, called Siboji, S-I-B-O-G-Y. You can check it out on their nice. channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. From there, uh, how about a PC game? Okay. We have Half-Life. But it's Spyro. Yeah, that's a dragon. It's Spyro the dragon. Spyro the Half-Life. Half-Life. But this is not just like... 
This is, uh, they actually kind of reworked a little bit of it to make it work Mm -hmm. with Spyro as opposed to, because, you know, Spyro is more of like a platforming, collecting gems, that kind of thing. It's not on shooting uh, Mm -hmm. zombies and stuff. But this actually looks like a pretty decent. Yeah, this is weird to look at. I'm not going to lie. There's a. Also, because the Spyro model is like better than anything that's in Half Life. Yeah. Weird. Yep. All right. Well, no, okay. Maybe not Spyro. Maybe not Spyro. Maybe not. Maybe what you want is Final Fantasy. Yeah, that's what I always want. So one developer, now that Final Fantasy VII is out on the PC, mm-hmm. uh, one developer looks like they're they're trying to essentially redo the game with the fixed camera angles from original Final Fantasy VII, but in the Final Fantasy VII remake engine. So instead of like... Um, Instead of being able to move the camera around at all times, they also have these sections where they're kind of doing like uh, attacks. I'm not sure if this is the redoing the entire combat system as part of this, but it's kind of an interesting thing to see. Like, yeah, the side by side. Yeah, I've had a, I've had my new th- theory of life that I'm developing. I think we we're talking about this on Psychonauts. I was, I was talking about listening to the radio in my car mm-hmm. and how it's like, you know, sometimes infinite power is less infinite than just like a directed experience yeah sometimes having the ability to do anything can be a detriment because you're like well i don't know what to do uh as opposed to just being like do this and you're like okay Uh, yeah yeah i'll I'll get on i'll get right on that yeah um so what do you think amanda yes no uh, i think it's interesting i don't i know enough about final fantasy 7 to be like ah yeah but like it's cool like i think it's it's neat to like really pull backwards because so people are so worried about making everything like you can zoom right up into the pores. And different, yeah. yeah, that you're you're forgetting what kind. Of, you, know, you lose a little bit of the charm of uh, some parts of games, and that doesn't mean that what came out the new thing is bad. It's just that like you, you can also have the opportunity to reel it back and kind of I, appreciate he, what you're getting you i think I mean? when i looked at this it was like i think i'd rather play this i yeah. think i'd rather play this fixed camera angle that was closer to like what final fantasy 7 was and then like if they redid the combat system so that it was just like turn-based instead of this active real-time nonsense yeah but all right all right so the camera didn't make such a big splash but i think i got one more you got one more final all fantasy right, last chance all right are you aware of the fact that in final fantasy 7 there's a part where cloud wears a dress Yes. He says, go to the Honey Bee Inn yes. and wear a dress. I did, oddly enough, know that. And then after that part, Cloud takes the dress off. Mm-hmm. But now that the game is on the PC, so people are like, uh, no, we're just going to make you wear yeah. the dress for the nope. entire game. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but they didn't actually use like the direct dress. Uh-huh. It's, there's like wow. kind of sluttier dresses. What like, a babe. Uh, what a dish. <laughs> but I feel like they're still using the, the head and the pigtail model from yeah. the dresses. And it's just hilarious. It's a little Twitter thread of just like all of these super girly dresses with uh, super serious cloud face in yeah. them. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, this is what the internet is for. This is this is exactly what the internet is for. What the internet is for. Yeah, uh, I, I think it's only a matter of time before the actual dress that Cloud if is. If I don't in. see a, a cosplayer dress like this, uh-huh. I'm going to be real <laughs> mad. I can, I'm sure that I could probably pull up Google right now and yeah, find that for true. you. <laughs> yeah, I'm worried what you'll find if you just Google that right away. Though. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. All right, that's the podcast. Heck yeah, we little, made it. We survived. Longer, a little longer than normal. Uh, well, about the same, to be honest. <laughs> I, always, yeah, you know. I always shoot for two two hours and always gets to two hours and fifteen minutes. So. Yeah. Huh, that was a that was a roller coaster. Now I think uh I think we're done. I think I just got for some reason I want to watch the Fast and Furious movies. Yeah, why? I don't, why? I don't know. It's really weird. It's really weird. <laughs> <laughs>